This program brought to you by New Scott's Lawn Response 911, a three-in-one solution that rescues your lawn. And a just plain beautiful day here in Dunedin, Florida for spring training baseball. And it won't be long, Pat, before the Blue Jays and Tampa Bay meet for keeps because two games into the season for the Blue Jays, both in Baltimore with an off day, it's off to St. Pete for four. You know, Jerry, and if you look at the numbers of Marcus Stroman versus the Tampa Bay Rays, there's a really good chance that we're going to see Marcus pitching against Tampa Bay that third game of the season because his numbers are off the charts against the Rays. Well, this is where Marco Marcus is going here today regarding the Rays lineup. Corey Dickerson leads off and left with Kevin Kiermaier, the outstanding center fielder, batting second. The franchise, Evan Longore, hits third at third with Brad Miller shifting now from short to second. Ricky Weeks, Jr., is batting fifth. He's at first base. Tim Beckham, highly regarded prospect, trying to realize that potential. He's at shortstop. Bottom third of the order, the catcher is Luke Maley. The DH is Nick Franklin. And Malik Smith, born in Tallahassee, Florida, batting ninth. You know, I, I love when the Tampa Bay Rays, Jerry, come to Dunedin because you're going to get some great players like this, the Longorias and the Kiermeyers and the Dickersons, Miller guys that you're going to get during the, the season because they live up here. And what Kevin Cash does, they, they, he lets them come up here, he lets them play the game, then they can go home and spend the night in their own bed. Well, let's start. The starting pitchers are brought to you by Scott's Turf Builder Green Max Lawn Food. Get a deep green lawn in just three days, and it is Marcus Stroman today. Well, I'm anxious to see Marcus this afternoon. He, his last start, he was outstanding versus the Pittsburgh Pirates as the Blue Jays are now taking the field. <laughs> Waiting for Marcus Stroman. Second start of the spring for Marcus, looking to build on a very strong first outing, that one I was just talking about, about the Pittsburgh Pirates. Sharp. He had his fastball working that day. His slider was outstanding. He wasn't trying to do too much with it, just throw quality pitches, keep it down in the, in the strike zone. Outstanding. Two innings, six up, six downs, three strikeouts. In fact, not one ball left the infield against Marcus Stroman. He looked like he was ready, and we were talking about it in the opening, Jerry, about Marcus getting ready for the WBC. So he came into camp on a mission. He came in great shape like he always does. He's a fabulous athlete, and I think he's just scratching the surface, and he's going to have a big year this year. Well, no one works any harder than he does. Funny story, I, last year when I talked to him, I said, now, Marcus, you're listed at 5'9", and he stopped me, he said, Jerry, no, I'm 5'8". And I said, okay, good, you're 5'8", they're going to change that. This spring, I heard him in an interview, and he said, well, I'm 5'7", and I, and he went on and on. I saw him the next day, and he said, now you're 5'7", pretty soon you'll be 5'0", even. What is he, shrinking <laughs> every year? I'll tell you what's not shrinking is that great arm. He's got an outstanding ability to throw the ball over the plate with multiple different types of pitches. His sinker, I think, is his bread and butter pitch. And I think you, you mentioned it again in the opening about him having a better second half, and I think his slider was better. His breaking ball was a lot better in the second half of last season. Well, a pitcher is only as good as his defense behind him. Jake Elmore gets to start at third base here today, throwing baseballs across the diamond. The young Rowdy Telez at first. Up the middle, Troy Tulowitzki, as we mentioned in his first game. Darwin Barney, a reliable player as a starter and a role player. He's at second base. Russ Martin's behind the plate. He's soon to go off with Team Canada and help them over the first round in Miami. In the outfield, Melvin Upton is in left, Kevin Pilar in center, Jose Bautista is in right. And we get our first look, Jerry, at Troy Tulowitzki, who will make his first spring start. He'll have two at-bats this afternoon in his first game, and then he'll be out of there. How dependable is he is at shortstop? 533 total chances last year. He made nine errors, but only two of them were throwing errors, which is important. He's the leader of this defense in the middle of that not diamond. And he sets such a good example, too, for all players with his work, discipline, and his attitude as a professional. Corey Dickerson steps in. Stroman into that compact windup. And it's time to play ball here in sunny Dunedin, Florida. Pitches outside ball one is noted by the young umpire, Nick Lentz. Dickerson will be followed by Kevin Kiermaier and then Evan Longoria. 
Dickerson gave him exactly what they wanted when they traded for him last year. They gave him power. They want to see that batting average climb just a little bit more. He takes it low and inside, and now 2-0, and oh, a very favorable count. Be careful. The wind is blowing out. I mean, it is actually howling. You can hear it probably through our headsets. The wind was blowing out today during batting practice. Be careful on this 2-0 pitch. It's on its way. A strike on the inside corner. Good location. Those flags in right center field standing at attention here with that wind that Pat just talked about. In right field, Jose Bautista, not a lot of room between him and that fence that now through the cyclone fence we see housing that Blue Jays bullpen. The 2 1 pitch, making ball high, 3 and 1. That's what makes Stroman so tough right there. He doesn't have to pump that sinker in there, 2 and 1. He can throw a curveball, he can cut the ball just a little bit more now. 9 and 10 a year ago with a 437 earned run average, but I thought he pitched much better than his numbers indicated. Back 3 1, the pitch is lifted into left center field. Coming on Melvin up, he's got that win to contend with. Staggers under it, makes the catch, and with that, this game is underway. We'll keep, we'll keep an eye out for that this afternoon, Jerry, with the outfielders, the way that this wind is just howling. It's changing courses from left to right. Sometimes it blows in, goes out to right field. Melvin Upton, a sure-handed outfielder, <laughs> had to deal with the wind on that first ball. Now another left-handed hitter for Stroman to face in Kevin Kiermaier. Today, two of the best center fielders in the game. One at the plate and one directly out in center field. Messrs. Kiermaier and Pilar. Kevin takes outside ball one. Kiermaier was hurt last year, and that hurt the Rays as well. Well, he's been moved up into the lineup under the number two hole, and they want to see that on-base percentage climb also. Kiermaier swing and a miss. Got outstanding speed. I mean outstanding speed. And you talk about great center fielders. We're seeing two of the best this afternoon. Jake Elmore in on the grass at third. Kiermaier will drop down a bunt very quick out of the box to first base. He takes one low, two and one. Pat, you played 12 years. We always talk about the win regarding an outfielder. We just did. How about for a pitcher? What does that win mean for Stroman and controlling those pitches? Well, I was reading an article the other day about a pitcher who was going to be throwing for the first time because he'd been injured and the wind was blowing in. Foul at the plate. And, and he was saying, hey, be careful in there because I don't know where the ball is going to go. It, it definitely has an effect on your pitches when the wind is behind you trying to gauge the sinker, especially for Marcus Stroman with everything that he features. I mean, literally has five or six different types of pitches that he's going to use. And back comes Stroman, a foul off to the right. It's just not easy to play the game, period. And then under these conditions, you really have to focus and pay attention, even with a spring training game. The toughest place to play that I, that I ever played was in your hometown, San Francisco, with the wind everywhere. I can <laughs> handle the rain. I can handle the snow. But I hate the wind, and so do all these ball players. Stroman into that windup of his. He misses inside ball three. Herb Kane was a longtime columnist out in San Francisco. He went to Candlestick a few times, and afterwards he dubbed it Windlestick. <laughs> right on with that one. It's the worst. Full count pitch. Fly ball hit the left center field deep. Pilar on the move. Now circles in. The wind blows it to Upton and up to off Upton's glove. Into second base, the speedy Kiermeyer, the throw into third on a bounce. And there's a ball that was hit to center field and eventually off the glove of the left fielder, Melvin Upton. There are veteran outfielders in the outfield this afternoon for the Toronto Blue Jays, and even they are having trouble with it. That ball looked like it was a fly ball to center field. Pilar comes in, and now it gets blown back towards the infield. And Melvin Upton, a very sure-handed outfielder, cannot come up with it. And with Kevin Kiermeyer running, you know that he's thinking three on that ball. And the only saving grace there, Pat, is that you don't want a collision anytime, but especially trying to avoid injuries in spring training. Be ready for it today. That win is going to be playing havoc with that baseball. So score that a two-base hit, wind aided, but a hit nonetheless. That brings up Evan Longori here as we start this game. One on, one out. Stroman with a runner in scoring position. 
Longoria takes strike one. One of the best players in the game, bar none. Perennial gold glove winner at third base. Almost didn't recognize him today, sporting the beard. <laughs> like, who is this guy? But you're right, one of the best. Takes a strike on the inside corner. If you're facing someone who is that good, you do yourself a favor when you get 0 at 2. Longoria, the at that time, Devil Rays, first round pick back in 2006 out of Long Beach State. His teammate, to Troy Tulowitzki, who's at short today. Swing and a miss. Strowman struck him out. Huge strikeout, two down. That's the pitch for me, at least, in the second half, which was key for him to have a good second half. I want to say he ran away from that good, sharp breaking ball, but it was a pitch that he didn't use as frequent as he had in the past, and that's a weapon when you're facing a tough right-handed hitter like Longoria. Brad Miller comes to the plate. Last year played shortstop. Logan Forsyth was at second. He has left the club, much to the dismay of Evan Longoria and others. And so Miller now has moved from short to second. Here he is. Pitches inside last year. It's noteworthy. He hit 30 home runs at shortstop. That was the most in the major leagues. Fifth was Tulowitzki with his 24. Well, he takes a healthy cut. He doesn't get cheated at all, Jerry. He's got the ability. We saw him with the Seattle Mariners. We saw that this guy's got some pop in that bat for a middle infielder. And the 1 0 pitch, swing and a miss. Good off speed pitch. Captured just there above the dirt by Russ Martin. What a treat it is for any pitcher to have Martin behind the plate. One and one on Miller. Ricky Weeks Jr. on deck. He's had a big spring so far. Non roster invitee. Kiermaier with good speed. Won't take much to get him home. Glove at the waist by Stroman. Leg kick, the pitch, swing, and a miss. Strike two. He's got a good breaking ball this afternoon. You can see it. You can see it come out of his hand, and the thing almost disappears underneath the bat. When you can sink the ball like Marcus Stroman can, and you can cut the ball like he can, then you start breaking off that hard slider. Now, as a hitter, you got three different pitchers you got to think about. Pitches on the ground at first. Backhanded stab beautifully by Rowdy Teles. Go to the bag. The inning is over. Keep the name in mind. He's still only 21. Rowdy Teles, there, who everyone knows can hit, can also field. You just saw it. So the Blue Jays in Tampa Bay were underway as we go to the bottom of the first here at Florida Auto Exchange Stadium. Back here in Dunedin, Florida, Kevin Pillar is going to lead it off for the Blue Jays, followed by Russ Martin. Pretty good one-two punch at the top. Troy Tulowitzki will have his first of a couple of at-bats this spring. He'll follow with Jose Bautista right behind him. A couple of home runs, six RBIs to lead the club this spring. The DH is Steve Pierce. Rowdy Telez has just wowed everybody here with that great play at first. He's at first batting six. Melvin Upton is in left. Darwin Barney bats eighth at second. And the third base, 
Jake Elmore. That is the lineup that Alex Cobb will face this afternoon. And in 2016, he returned from Tommy John's surgery to make five starts for the Rays in the month of September. The first of those starts, in fact, was against the Blue Jays. And he got stronger as the game went along, retired the last 10 batters that he faced. He then beat the Jays on September the 14th for his only win of 2016. In fact, that was his first victory since September of 2014, almost two years to the day. He's a good one when he is healthy. And he gets Kevin Pillar here to start it off. Luke Maley, the, the target. Fastball is inside, ball one. Luis Rivera coaching down at third base already in conversation with a third base on Chad Whitson. Down at first, Tim Leeper. 1-0 delivery lined into right field. That's a base hit. And Cobb will immediately pitch from the stretch. For the Tampa Bay Rays, we mentioned Luke Maley behind the plate on the infield. Outstanding third baseman Evan Longoria. Tim Beckham, he's at short. On the right side, Brad Miller with Ricky Weeks Jr. at first. In the outfield, he's from Tallahassee, Florida. Malik Smith spells that name M-A-L-L-E-X. Kevin Kiermeyer in center and over in right field is Smith, I beg your pardon, and in left field, Corey Dickerson. And a great infield in Longoria. Miller, the change over there at second base. And keep an eye on Ricky Weeks over at first base. There is the battery for this afternoon. Ricky Weeks, because of an injury to Logan Morrison, is getting some at-bats, and he's been hot. Lead by Pilar. Fastball strike to Russ Martin. Good test for Cobb right here, too. Uh, a pitcher would like to breeze through a one, two, three inning, but first hitter reaches. That's the value of the leadoff, man. It might be Devin Travis, but Devin Travis might not even make opening day with that bruised knee. With the injuries that he has, and right now it's Kevin Plar at the, at the leadoff spot. Russell Martin getting a chance hitting second for the Blue Jays today. Got some of the stars in there this afternoon, don't they? They certainly do, and the stars will be exiting after this game. Martin will stay here. Team Canada comes here on Tuesday. We have that broadcast for you. The WBC club representing Canada, Dalton Pompey in center field. Russ will be an advisor there for their games in Miami. The pitch in for a strike. Jose Bautista hitting fourth. He's on his way to Bradenton with the Dominican Republic. And then they play Canada on Thursday in Miami. We get a chance to see him all on Tuesday, don't we? At the workout tomorrow, go over and take a look at some of the players from Team Canada. Greg Hamilton does a terrific job with Baseball Canada and the WBC teams managed by Ernie Witt. There's a throw to first Pilar dives back in here in this first inning. No score each team with a base hit and it was Pilar leading off here for the Blue Jays. Cobb's got a great move over to first base but I don't anticipate Pilar this early in spring training to try and steal bases. Right now as a player, the beginning parts of spring training, you're trying to get your feet wet, you're trying to get your muscles in shape, get a, getting a feel for it. As we go along in spring training, I'm sure we'll see some of the guys try to steal some bases. Pat, you often hear of a maybe slow-footed catcher when he runs, they say he's running into the wind. Well, today, anybody's running into yeah. the wind. <laughs> They're not running downwind, are they? Right into it. Weak souls on Pilar. Kevin will steal a base for you. A couple of years ago, 25 to lead the club. Martin takes it low. There goes Kevin. Delayed steal. Throw down on a bounce. The slide out at second base is Kevin. A great pick of that throw that time. Nicely coming over from second base was Brad Miller. You know, I'm not sure if that was a delay steal or he read the ball in the dirt and he was going to try and move up 90 feet. Pilar, always a heads up type of ball player. You can track the flight of the ball over from first base and get that angle of the ball going down. You can see him. He sees the ball in the dirt, but it's an outstanding play by the catcher, Luke Maley. Smothers the ball, comes up firing, and just gets Pilar ahead of the throw. He is out. Now the 2-2 pitch is outside. I think we would have had that one uh, replay. What do you think? In the regular season? <laughs> I think you're right. And one of the changes, you have 30 seconds as a manager to make that call, and then the replay will take no longer than two minutes. They have to make a decision after two minutes. Interesting little twist from last year. 3-2 pitch fouled off the foot of Martin. It remains full. 
Some of those replays last year, Pat, they took four and five and six minutes. If there's a two minute limit, boy, they're going to have to really push and shove to make the right call. Hallelujah. <laughs> right. And you also have 30 seconds to decide if you want to make that call. A lot of times last year, the manager would come out, he'd put his hand up, he'd ask for time as they made a phone call back to the clubhouse to see if they actually want to go ahead and do it. Martin Lines run right to the knees of second baseman Brad Miller, so he has a couple of putouts in the inning. Two gone. You can't hit it any harder than that. That voice you hear is public address announcer Bill Christie, who lives down here. He's the longtime public address announcer for the Dunedin Blue Jays in spring training baseball. He's from St. Catharines in Ontario. And grew up following the Blue Jays, and nice to have Bill here all these years, bringing Blue Jays to the plate. Now, there's a kid's dream, isn't it? You follow them as a kid, and then you get to introduce them later on. Dulo gets that chant and takes strike one called. No score, just getting started here first inning. Troy in his first spring training game. Talked to John Gibbons before the game, and they just had to rest to Lewitsky the last two years. Shortened off seasons with going to October baseball. There's a dribble up along third, fielded by Cobb, takes his time, throws it to first, and that is that. So Cobb gives up the base hit, but his catcher, Luke Bailey, takes care of that, and they're scoreless here at the end of one. Welcome back to Dunedin. Marcus Stroman expected to throw roughly 45 pitches in this outing. John Givens telling me that uh, uh, he is on a different plan, an accelerated plan, because of his participation in the upcoming World Baseball Classic. I mentioned that we would see Marco Estrada for the first time this spring. Gibbons would like to see Estrada go at least two innings. Of course, that all depends on how things go in his first inning of work. As for that nagging back issue from last year, Gibbons says Estrada has had, quote, zero complaints. Asked how he feels about the entire rotation from what he has seen so far, minus Aaron Sanchez. Gibbons said he's pleased with what uh, he's been seeing. If he is going to be nitpicky, Jerry, he said command is, in his words, a tick off, but it is still early. Early, plenty of time to make those adjustments. Thank you, Hazel. Great insight. The pitch is outside as Stroman faces Ricky Weeks here to start this second inning. And as Hazel talks about some of the, the details regarding the World Baseball Classic and who's pitching and who's not, that's a very tricky area for all managers. Stroman's pitch, that's high. Yesterday, Paul Molitor and the Minnesota Twins hosted the Blue Jays. They have 10 players going to the World Baseball Classic. And what do you do? You, you have to get them ready and then hope that they don't overextend themselves because their primary concern is their major league team. Yeah, and I know there's some limitations and innings limits and pitch limits and all of that that, that goes on with the WBC. For the Blue Jays, they basically have on the pitching side, Marco Estrada, I believe, is 
or was going to pitch for Mexico. I'm not sure if he's going to pitch into the second round now. Marcus Stroman is throwing the first round for the U.S. team and Jay Happ possibly the second. There's a strike on three and one. But you're right. They have to get ready. You have to be able to get him up to about two, maybe three innings. Marcus is hopeful for 45 pitches in three innings this afternoon. Weeks is off to a great start here as a non roster player. Stroman's pitch strike two called just for the record Roberto Osuna going representing Mexico Jose Bautista with the Dominican. Then you have Dalton Pompey who will play for Team Canada. Russ Martin will advise unable to play. Jay Happ and Marcus Stroman for the U.S. US. and then second round is Marco Estrada on the basis of how his back feels and Hazel just talked about how good it feels. And we talked to Estrada a couple of days ago about that and he was smiling saying in the offseason I did a lot of core work to help myself in that area. Right now I don't envision any problems. It's probably an issue he'll have to take care of the rest of his life. Well the core for a baseball player is so important. Pitching hitting. I mean there's so much twisting turning especially pitching but if he's healthy he's one of the best in the American League. 3 2 pitch strike three called painted the inside corner one down. Marcus was probably wondering where's that pitch been in that whole sequence of that bat versus Ricky Weeks. Just watching the body language of Stroman you could see a couple of those pitches he he thought were strikes early on but he got it when he needed it. So two strikeouts and a ground ball to end the inning to Rowdy Tellez. Last year in the major leagues who led with the highest ground ball percentage. Yes Stroman at 61 percent. Here's Tim Beckham right handed hitter. There's a first pitch strike. Aaron Sanchez by the way was fifth in the major leagues getting ground balls 55 percent of the time and those two pitchers don't necessarily want to see the strike zone change and move up two inches. <laughs> no not, not when you got that type of sinker and you can keep that ball down. Fly ball hit the right field deep. The wind takes Bautista back to the fence where he makes a backhanded catch staying with it all the way two down. Well when that sinker is working Jerry and, and it normally does when Marcus Stroman is on the mound, he's going to generate a lot of ground ball out nearly four ground balls for every fly ball that led the American League and there's that ground ball rate that you were talking about 61 percent of the time when the ball is hit it's on the ground so you have to have good defenders and I think that worked at times to a disadvantage for Stroman because he would get the ground ball and if you remember last year there were a lot of times that ball found the way into the outfield 45 hoppers through the infield so you can't guide it after they hit it. Bailey with strike one a pitcher's best friend and Stroman now getting into that first pitch strike. What an asset that is for a pitcher. Pitch misses inside one ball and one strike. You know when you've got those kind of ground ball abilities like an Aaron Sanchez or Marcus Stroman even if you make a mistake and there's a runner on base a ground ball can get you out of the inning for a double play. There's a line drive into right center field that's a base hit. Pilar will pick it up. Melee goes the other way for Nick Franklin. Designated hitter number two, Nick Franklin. Last time out, Marcus, you can't pitch any better than he did his last time out. They didn't even get the ball out of the infield. The Pirates in his two innings last time. And a couple of elevated balls, one a fly ball. That shouldn't have been a double in the first inning. That's the first solid hit that he's given up this spring. Now left handed hitter to contend with here there is a pitch that's just low ball one. Well from here on out Stroman will leave he'll join Team USA Jay Happ with him. And those players no matter where they go with the 16 teams they're going to learn a lot in the clubhouse from other men which you can't experience in your own clubhouse. There's a certain degree of veterans in the Blue Jays clubhouse that youngsters learn from a couple of years ago Roberto Osuna with Latroy Hawkins now Kendrys Morales is helping others. But at the WBC if you do go you can only gain from it. Well I remember a few years ago that balls hit on the ground and we'll continue that story next inning. And with that we are going to the bottom of the second inning here in sunny and windy Dunedin Florida as the Blue Jays and Marcus Stroman take on the Rays and Alex Cobb. <laughs>
alternate red jersey and alternate cap available right now. Get yours today at jshop.ca. Jerry. Thank you, Hazel. And just about everybody the last couple of years has sold out that shop because of the enthusiasm generated last year by 3.4 million fans. I lost a lot of money in there last year. My family came down, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat, you played with the 92 World Series team and 93, you began your broadcasting career with the Blue Jays. And for me, and I've said to this to people having worked 35 years, this is year number 36. The crowds the last two years were louder than the 92 and 93 crowds. And I bet you probably felt that a little bit too. Absolutely. I mean, they are getting into the Blue Jays from all over. It's a great team to get behind. No score, bottom of the second inning. Jose Bautista against Alex Cobb. Pitch misses ball one. Jose with a couple of home runs this spring, six RBIs. He's ready to go right now, let alone go to Bradenton tomorrow to begin to work out with the Dominican Republic team. Had a chance to watch him the last couple of days take batting practice and hit in the game and I think he's ready for the season to start right now. The way he is hitting the ball, he's on everything. He'll take his shot to right field every now and then. He takes ball three. Now watch out if you're Alex Cobb. Jose, we've seen, and this is his 10th year as a Blue Jay. We've seen him hit a number of home runs on 3-0 counts. Regular season. Pitches inbound. Line down the left field line. Fair base hit. That'll go to the corner where it's going to be picked up by Corey Dickerson and Jose has half a home run if you will on that 3-0 pitch. Well one of those home runs that you were talking about on a 3-0 pitch came the other day right here in Dunedin. He got a 3-0 pitch and hit a laser just to the left of the batter's eye for a home run and I was talking to him the next day and he was saying 3-0 and if you're going to lay one right in there just like the one right there he says I'm going to get ready and I'm going to get ready to hit and hit it hard. This time he scorches the ball down the left field line for yet another extra base hit. Steve Pierce comes up right handed hitting DH a leadoff double. Blue Jays trying to score the game's first run here in the second inning. Rays up from Port Charlotte. There goes Bautista the pitch breaking ball outside throw to third short hop taken by Longoria and Bautista just picked the pocket of Alex Cobb. Well, the book on Alex Cobb is he's got that long, exaggerated leg kick as he goes home. And Jose picked something up on him that he took one look at him. He had the slow, long leg kick. And Bautista says, I'll take a chance here. Take a shot at stealing a base and makes it really easily. He might have even been, and he's such a smart player, read the breaking ball sign because that was an advantage for him as well. The 1 0 pitch to Pierce is low 2 and 0. You were at second base a lot in your career. How tough was it or easy was it to pick up a catcher sign? Could never get it. <laughs> they, somebody had to tell me what sign they were using because I could <laughs> never get it. I couldn't guess. I used to give wrong signals all the time, guys at the plate. Those hitters would say, Pat, thanks, yeah. but no thanks. Yeah, I, I'm better off on my own. Pierce hits a fly ball to right field. Now wind aided. That's going back toward the wall. Running along the wall, the right fielder Smith. He makes the catch. Loping home is Bautista. He scores, and the Blue Jays are in flight here in Dunedin, leading the Rays one to nothing. Well, one of the strengths of the Blue Jays is their situational hitting. You've got a runner at third base and less than two outs, and they practice it every day. Stay behind the ball. Let the ball travel as far as you can. Something Steve Pierce does right there. You can see he's a veteran type of hitter. Let's that ball travel. If I can get that ball up into the air and pick up a very easy RBI. Steve is 33. It is Major League debut 10 years ago back in September. Rowdy Telez up left handed hitter. He goes around with a half swing strike one. Interesting to note Pat, you and I were talking before the game on the third game of the year last year in St. Pete when on the slide at second Bautista was ruled out double play off the bat of Edwin Encarnacion and who was playing first for Tampa Bay Steve Pierce <laughs> yeah, he just <laughs> knocked him in <laughs> pay attention 
You know, it's really interesting to see the Tampa Bay Rays, the way that they're going to play defense. Not a big sure. book on Rowdy Telez. This is his first big league camp, but here they are already with the shift on. Now, they don't know Rowdy Telez. He can hit the ball the other way. A lot of power. Still just 21. And the pitch to him is low. Buck Martinez is in Japan calling the first round there with the World Baseball Classic. And we bring that up because Rowdy Telez graduated from Elk Grove High School in Sacramento, the same school that did produce one Buck Martinez. Hall of Famer Buck Martinez, right? Just inducted into the Sacramento Sports Hall of Fame this winter. So our best to Buck over in Japan calling that first round. Telez a swing and a miss. Two and two, cute story on Rowdy. I went up to him a week ago and I said, you're a big slugger. How did you end up with uniform number one? Did you ask for that? He said, no. He said, I came, came into the locker room of the clubhouse and I started at the 40s. And then I thought, don't tell me they gave me a higher number. And finally, I started at the beginning and there was my name, Rowdy Telez, number one. <laughs> How did he end up with number one? That's the biggest number one I've ever seen. It is, there's a check swing foul. I told him, Someone else for number one and he's on the level of excellence at the Rogers Center when you get there and he will more than likely this year Tony Fernandez. But now that fits for Tony an infielder not a power slugging first baseman. How about 21. Be very good. Number. 21 would be a good number right. Delgado or 25. That was a pretty good number at first base. He started with 21. And then, and then Roger Clemens came over and said I'll buy that number from you. <laughs> The pitch is low. That's when a Rolex watch kind of factored in. <laughs> exactly. But Rowdy's a good one here, and he works extremely hard at his game. And the first base dugout is Bobby Meacham. He's been the double-A manager the last three years, and now he's going to triple-A to manage Buffalo. Gary Allenson, who was there, will manage the double-A team. Bobby always working with Telez at first base. 3-2 pitch. Breaking ball, strike three call. Great pitch by Cobb. Two down. Now that's the kind of pitch that you might not see too often in the minor leagues. No, it, three two breaking ball. Doesn't know a lot about Alex Cobb. Probably anything that he has seen on TV. The one thing that he does know is he'll throw a, a lot of off speed pitches. I think Marco Estrada has the best change up in the American League. Well right behind him I think is Alex Cobb. He's got the second best change up and he's going to use it almost a third of the time that change up that time it was an off speed breaking ball. Melvin Upton to the plate. He takes strike one called a former Devil Ray and then later they changed their name to the Rays. Longtime center fielder went by BJ at that time. Now Melvin Upton Jr. Of course his dad is Melvin and his dad goes by boss man. There's a pitch a high fly ball in the left field coming on for it is Corey Dickerson now still coming on with the win taps the glove makes the catch and the inning is over. So Bautista leads it off with a double, steals third, and then Steve Pierce delivers the goods with a sacrifice fly to right. One nothing, Blue Jays through two against Tampa Bay.
Coming up at 4 p.m. right here on Sportsnet, the Canadian Women's Hockey League will determine its champion as the Calgary Inferno and Montreal Canadiens meet in the Clarkson Cup Final for a second straight season. Catch all the action from the Canadian Tire Centre in beautiful Ottawa right after the ball game here in Dunny. Jerry. Thank you, Hazel. And a little history here for the Tampa Bay Rays coming up. Number zero, first ever to wear that in a Rays uniform, Malik Smith. Spells that first name M A L L E X. He's going to take on Marcus Stroman here for a third inning. Stroman has blanked the Rays over two, giving up a double in the first, a two out single in the second. Smith, a great bunter, so you have to watch him. And he turns to bunt and takes a strike as he offered at it. Malik, back in 2014, with two clubs in the minor leagues for the Rays, stole 88 bases. Yes, you heard that right. 48 with one team and 40 with another. He loves to bunt. He'll beat out his share of infield hits. He fouls one off at the plate. No balls and two strikes. He was saying that the other day. He says, that's part of my game. I love the bunt. He feels like it's a lost art, that people don't practice it enough and use it enough. But when you can run like that, and you mentioned the, the stolen bases, when you can run like that, you better be able to bunt the ball. He was with Atlanta last year. Played in 72 games at just 238. Pitch is nubbed up along the right side. Charged by Darwin Barney. Quick throw to first. Got him. And you have to be quick with Smith. We were talking to the Rays announcers about Malik's and a very unusual first name. He's a Floridian. And they said that his parents were very creative. He has a lot of brothers and sisters. They all, the names all begin with the letter M, but they're off the chart names as well. Have you ever heard the name Malik's? No, <laughs> not until I heard his name when he got traded over here. Did some research on him. Never heard of it. He stole 16 bases in his 72 games with Atlanta. Didn't get on a lot, as we mentioned, hitting 238, but he was caught eight times. So that's the difference between the minor leagues and the major leagues. You have to be good to get here, and then you have to get even better to stay. Corey Dickerson takes strike one. I think that's something that the Tampa Bay Rays got away from is Great team speed. Remember the teams in 2008, 9, 10, they always had guys who could run. Melvin Upton when he was over there. Carl Crawford. The dribble up long first. Speed type of players. Last year, they went all home runs. They hit a lot of home runs, but they didn't generate or manufacture a lot of runs either. No, it was a tough year for Kevin Cash. The year before, the Rays were 80 and 82, almost played 500 ball in his first year. And then last year, Pat, 68 and 94. Very unraised like, if, if you will. They had some, some injuries to their starters. Alex Cobb didn't pitch the whole year. There's a line drive to the left field. That's a base hit. With Aaron Loop warming up in the bullpen for the Blue Jays, Strom is getting close to that pitch count. And here he is in the third inning, so John Gibbons could very well go to loop at any particular moment. Well, he tried to trick up Corey Dickerson. Dickerson's been around the quick pitch. He hesitated the previous pitch, and then the quick pitch right there with two strikes. And Dickerson was waiting for it. Slaps it the other way for a base hit. That's something that Marcus has been tinkering with over the last couple of years. Just give the hitter a little something else to think about. Infield looking for that double play ground ball possibility to come out of the inning. A strike call to Kiermaier who doubled the left center. But it was a, a one with an asterisk after it as it was a fly ball into left center field hit well but playable for Pilar and then later it blew into left field where Upton charged and it kicked off his glove. Fastball high. I almost get the feeling that the winds have slackened a little bit but even then it's still very brisk. Very, and the outfielders have to know that they were out here early today, working on uh, fly balls. Infielders working on pop-ups and grounders, getting ready for this afternoon's ball game. Hirmar takes it inside off the glove of Martin. Up to second base goes the runner Dickerson. So Strowman lets one. Get away, and that might be a barometer for John Gibbons to say, too, maybe just flagging a little bit. Well, he's on a pitch count as that ball gets away from Russ Martin. Russell tried to backhand that ball. He's on a pitch count of 45, and Gibby 
Wasn't sure if that would get him into the fourth inning, get him through three innings. Generally speaking, you'd like to have 15 pitches per inning. So that should be three innings for Marcus. Tying run at second. Swing and a miss. Two and two. We mentioned earlier about the two best center fielders maybe in the American League are here today. Kevin Pilar and center Kiermaier behind the plate. We've talked a lot about Pilar being a 32nd round pick. How about Kiermaier? A 31st round pick out of a junior college in Illinois back in 2010. Both have made it and then some. Football player. Kevin Kiermaier was a football player can really run. Stroman's pitch. Foul to play. Russ can't quite hold it, so it's still two and two. We were just talking about uh, Marcus Stroman. That was pitch number 44 right there of the afternoon. So this might be his his last batter. So about to reach that goal. Marcus Stroman. And then off to pitch for Team USA. Pretty good sized lead at second by Dickerson. The pitch inside. So it's three and two, and John Gibbons now is probably going to let him just finish this up with Kiermaier here at the plate. He's just 25. Against a 25 year old. So youth will be served here on this pitch, one way or another. 3 2 pitch, swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Martin will look at second, step out in front of the plate, get his man at first base, two down. We'll see if Pete Walker comes out. Pete has done the pitching changes here this spring. That's what makes Marcus so tough is you can't really sit on one pitch. He can be unpredictable. That time with two strikes to Kevin Kiermaier, looked like he pulled the string and threw him a changeup. Down in the dirt, in the dirt, Kiermaier swings over the top of it. And it looks like Blue Jays are going to stretch him out a little bit, let him face Evan Longoria. Longoria struck out back in the first inning. Blue Jays up one nothing here in the third. Bautista doubled in the second, stole third, and home on Steve Pierce sacrificed fly to right. Longoria, as we mentioned, out of Long Beach State University. He was recruited there by Mike Weathers, the head coach. Stroman will look back at second. And the delivery, that was lined into right field. That's a base hit. Bautista will field it. Coming in to score without a throw is Dickerson. Longoria goes the other way. And Tampa Bay has tied it 1-1 here in the top of the third inning as Pete Walker now will come out to bring in left-hander Aaron Luke. You know, that's what makes Evan Longoria so tough is his ability to hit the ball from foul line to foul line. He lets that ball get deep, and he's able to slice that ball to right field. No chance for Jose Bautista to throw out Dickerson with two outs. He is running on contact. Picks up his third base coach, and with that base hit, Longoria ties this one up. Aaron Loop comes on from that right field bullpen. Uh, one one tie here in Dunny.
Aaron Loop getting loose here, trying to establish where he was his first two years as a Blue Jay. Third year, it began to crack a little bit, and now he's got to find himself because there's a lot of competition, Pat, in that bullpen this spring. And they need that second left-hander behind J.P. Howell. Aaron has gotten into a couple of games already this spring, two innings, two hits, a couple of walks, and three strikeouts. Last season for the Blue Jays, just 14 and a third innings pitched, 15 hits. And when you have a situational hitter, or excuse me, a situational pitcher like Aaron is, lefty on a left-handed hitter, that's when you've got to be able to strike him out, not walk him, keep your hits to innings pitched down. Isn't it interesting, Aaron, for a while there was a two-inning pitcher, and now he's in a situation here where he might be asked to just get one left-handed hitter, as you mentioned, and here's one here in Brad Miller. That's a great opportunity for him. Come out of the bullpen in spring training. This might be your job right here. You know, sixth, seventh, eighth inning. Tough left-handed batter, and there's a ton of left-handed, good left-handed hitters in the American League East. You've got to come in and you've got to get them out. Loop is set. Longori at first base is two out. Hit the right is tied it at one. Pitch is outside. We were mentioning about Longoria recruited at Long Beach State by Mike Weathers, the head coach. And when he came, he was a shortstop. He went to Mike and said, thanks for recruiting me at shortstop. And Mike said, no, uh, we have a shortstop here. His name is <laughs> Troy Tulowitzki. How about we put you at third? And Evan said, OK, that'd be pretty good with me. There's a ground ball to the mound. Backhand beautifully by Loop. Throw to first. The inning is over. Then those two playing on the left side of the diamond had a pitcher come as well named Marco Estrada. And if you're Mike Weathers, kudos to you for your recruiting. Bottom of the third we go, 1-1, Blue Jays and Rays. Beautiful sunny Sunday here in Dunedin. The Blue Jays are in their 10th game, and guess what? A starter, one of the five, has given up a run. Yeah, one of the projected starters. Uh, everybody knows the strength of the Blue Jays. They're going to be their five starters if they can stay healthy. They're going to put up some big numbers, and we just saw Marcus Stroman give up a two out base hit to Evan Longoria, the first run given up by one of the projected starters. Jay Happ had us a couple of innings, given up one hit. Francisco Liriano was outstanding the other day. Jerry had that slider change up and fastball working in his two innings with three strikeouts. And Marcus, up to four and two thirds innings, six strikeouts, and that was the first run he'd given up all spring. That's the strength of the Blue Jays this year, no question about it. The five starters trying to stay healthy with Joe Biagini as the backup. Darwin Barney here against Ray's starter Alex Cobb in his third inning. Now there is the pause a double kick. I'm not quite sure what he was trying to do there I, other than I, maybe he slipped. Yeah I, I think he lost his balance on on the mound. He started to rock and fire and went back just a little bit to maybe got blown over by the wind. <laughs> That's been known to happen. Yes a strike on the outside corner. In fact Steve Mack is right here in our booth here helping us put this broadcast together. And he was laughing before the game and he said watch out this game might be called because of wind. OK well that was his comment. I, I noted that there's a ground ball hit the third taken by Longoria. 
A throw on the first and it's high and still keeping his foot on the bag Ricky Weeks. Yes the Blue Jays did have a game winded out at Exhibition Stadium. It was roughly 1984 maybe 83 but I think it was 84. Big Jim Clancy was on the mound. It was windy and in about the second inning Jim got blown off the mound into a windup and they didn't think too much about it. When it happened two more times the plate umpire said that's it for today. A winded out game at Exhibition Stadium. I've never heard of that before. Was right there to call that with my late partner Tom Cheek and you just don't hear that happen but the winds off Lake Ontario right through Exhibition Stadium caused that game to be canceled. There's a strike called to Jake Elmore and the point we were making is if that wind is blowing Jim Clancy off the bound it's time for everybody to go home. Big Jim. <laughs> he was a big man wasn't he. Oh yes. The old one pitch lined in the left field. There's a base hit for Elmore. A super utility player. And over time he has heard the phrase a Jake of all trades as Elmore goes back to first. Oh, he's got a shot at that. Depending on injuries and the makeup of the team to make this team out of spring training. If not he'll go down to Buffalo and serve as some insurance. He's got some big league experience. First time I saw him I saw him with the Tampa Bay Rays. He can play all the positions on the diamond. Kevin Pillar will step up. That's what you want. I always felt too that Ben Zobris who really got that reputation. He was a an all star and when he went to the all star game a number of years ago with these Rays he had started at six different positions not just one or two. Now he plays those two at second base in the outfield for Joe Madden. There's a strike called to Pilar. But really for Ben Zobris who wears a world wears a World Series ring now with the Cubs. He was a use super utility starter not just a player. He got two World Series rings doesn't he this year he's going to try and make it three in a row. He was on the Kansas City roster a couple of years ago and then the, of course the Cubbies last year. But if you have a utility player like that who can play multiple positions you might be able to carry an extra pitcher and, and help your ball club that way. Pilar here in a 1 1 game Blue Jays and Rays single the right to open the game for the Blue Jays in this leadoff spot and then tried to advance to second base and was thrown out by catcher Luke Maley. Lead by Elmore the pitch fouled off third base side. Well what the Tampa Bay Rays are hoping for is some health. We, we mentioned the Blue Jays starting staff is the, the backbone of their team. You can say the same thing against the Tampa for the Tampa Bay Rays. The backbone of their team is their great starting pitching. A lot of injuries last year. In fact Alex Cobb they're just hoping that he stays healthy four straight seasons. Cobb has missed six weeks or more due to injury. Five out of six seasons he has missed time because of injury. Tommy John surgery thoracic outlet syndrome. He had an oblique problem. This guy when he's healthy is tough. Pat you remember there was a time when the Rays did not have a Tommy John surgery mm -hmm. at the major league level for something like eight or nine years. They were doing it right. In the last couple of years though they've been really their starters have been hit hard by injuries. Pitch on the way ground ball foul again past third and coach Luis Rivera. And if they do stay healthy all the way through the season the starters a lot of those would you say that they're the people who think they, they know everything the pronosticators are picking them as a dark horse this year the guys the teams they think they, that they can do something in the American League East based on their great starting pitching Cobb set one out Elmore the lead breaking ball hit on the ground to third taken by Longoria quick throw to second one back to first two. And there's Evan Longoria doing what he does so well. A lot of gold in that glove. So at the end of three, the Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays are locked up in a good one here. One to one, Cobb and Strowman.
for one, Marco Estrada, who is happy to be back. And the Blue Jays are happy to see Marco Estrada take the mound for the first time. He was on a pitch count also this afternoon, 25 pitches, and they're hoping that'll take him through a couple of innings. Last season, 29 starts. That is a career high for Estrada. He was an all-star. Batters hit 203 against him, the best in the American League, a 348 earned run average. 176 innings, just 65 base on balls for Estrada. Everybody knows about that changeup, but he's got other weapons that can get you out. He can cut the ball now. He's got a nice little curve ball, and he's very smart, very ingenious out on that mound when it comes to pitching. Pat, sometimes you'll hear the phrase, someone is a prince of a man. That is Marco Estrada. He's as nice as they come, humble, modest, unassuming, and can he compete? He loves to compete. 176 innings pitched. I mentioned last year's just 132 hits given up. One to one the score. Fourth inning. Estrada to face Ricky Weeks Jr. Ricky struck out looking against Stroman back in the second inning. Estrada pitched. Reached out and hit into the air into shallow right field. The second baseman Barney goes out but Bautista comes in. He makes the catch. One pitch one out. The shortstop number one, Tim Bucky. The other day I had a great conversation with Marco and talking about his changeup. And he said, one thing I always try to remember is how good my changeup is and how it works for me. He said, some people will say to me, oh, remember, this hitter is a great changeup hitter. He pitches. And Marco said, I've been told that a lot. Well, I watch this man, watch this hitter. He said, what I do is I rule that out. I don't get caught up in the negativity of what they might do to my changeup. I throw my best pitch and let them hit it. I stay in a positive mode. Well, they've never seen Marco Estrada's changeup. It's an interesting pitch. That might have been it right there. The pop up down the line. Telez runs out of room. He throws it with force, four seam fastball backspin. A lot of times when you you have pitchers talk about the changeup. They want it to fade or they want it to cut just a little bit or just take a little something off. His is like a four seam fastball where he gets that backspin. And as a hitter trying to pick that up, it looks fastball all the way. Your mind says fastball the way it comes out of his hand and you start to swing. And it just disappears. It doesn't get there. Tim Beckham who lined out deep to right. Fouls one off to the right one and two. Speculation would have it over the first two games of the season in Baltimore. Aaron Sanchez and Jay Happ. You already mentioned, Pat, the numbers Marcus Stroman's had against Tampa Bay. Not too many people have thrown a perfect game over seven and a third innings against the Rays, but Marco Estrada has. There's a swing and a miss. He struck him out on guess what? But Estrada gets that diving catch in the stands by Josh Donaldson, then another. Hitter dribbles one up along a third base line for the first hit he allowed getting 22 up and 22 down. Look for him to make a start in that four game series against the Rays. Yeah he dealt against them a couple of years ago and what makes him so tough is that changeup. he can throw it at any time in the count. A lot of times he'll throw it with two strikes. How about this 85 strikeouts the most off of a changeup in the major leagues last season. So when you get the two strikes there's a good chance you're going to get a change up. But he and Russell Martin are so smart, they work so well together. They might pick up on that and start cutting the ball just a little bit more. That's where it's a real treat to have Russ Martin behind the plate. 2 0 the count here on Melee, who's single to center in the second inning. 1 1 tie here in the fourth. Strata's in high. The thing is, too, the arm speed is exactly the same with the fastball and the changeup. Comes right out of the same arm slot. And that's what I mean. It's so tough for a, a batter to pick up the spin. I think the pitch that really took Marco to the next level as a pitcher a couple of years ago when he developed the cutter. Now you've got two different types of fastballs. You got the four seam fastball and then you can just cut the fastball whenever you want. Pilar ends the inning with a line drive right at his chest there in center field. So welcome back. Marco Estrada, three up and three down. 1-1, one, one, Blue Jays and Rays here in Dunedin.
Steve Pierce, who's coming off elbow surgery, is making his first start this spring this afternoon. Now, in Friday's ball game, he, pin hit for, he pinch hit for Kendrys Morales and told me afterwards that he felt comfortable in the box and his timing was good. Pierce did admit that he still needs to work on his throwing. As far as defensively, he wouldn't give me any specifics except to say that he's trying to avoid any setbacks, but the game plan moving forward is to ramp things up every game. Now, Pierce said as an athlete and a competitor, he is eager to go max effort each and every time, but he's going to leave things uh, in his trainer's hands. He's going to try to stay patient, and Jerry, above all else, just try and follow protocol. Well, that's his goal, Hazel, to stay on the field. And he was one of the very first here this offseason, right here in Dunedin, where the Blue Jays have put together under Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins a high performance team that is really high performance. Nikki Huffman came over from Duke University when she worked with Marcus Stroman there a couple knee a couple years ago after his knee surgery. And Pierce said, I can't believe all the help I'm getting right here in so many different areas. And that's what Mark Shapiro is all about. High performance team, part of the, what the Blue Jays are doing, other clubs as well, but the Blue Jays have taken it to another level. New pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays. This is Ryan Gardner, the former 34th round draft pick back in 2012 from right here in Clearwater, Florida. His first pitch just misses to Russ Martin. Russ lined out the second first time up. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, a 1 1 game. Rays with four hits, the Blue Jays with three. Fastball for a strike. Bautista doubled into the left field corner, opening the second inning, stole third, and then home on Steve Pierce. Yes, Steve Pierce, the aforementioned designated hitter today, a sacrifice fly to right. Real good piece of hitting by Steve Pierce. Brian Garton, one of seven rookie relievers for the Rays in 2016. I was mentioning earlier, a couple of innings ago, about the injuries that they had. They had some injuries in the bullpen also. Seven rookie relievers for the Rays in 2016. Pitches outside. That's tough on any manager, let alone Kevin Cash just getting started. 37 appearances over four stints with the Rays. So he was riding that AAA shuttle last season. It's on the way, hit foul down the right side. Pat just mentioned that Garten is from Clearwater. That's true. And Ryan, when he grew up, spent, he said, my entire life going to Tropicana Field to watch the Tampa Bay Rays, my favorite team. And now he is one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Jesse Litch story, right? Yes. Jesse was the bat boy for the Rays for a few years. Martin takes it low. Those are great stories when you see that. And you hear about someone who idolizes a team or and I might add just right now the gentleman to my right Pat Tabler born in Hamilton. Now that's not Hamilton Ontario. That's Hamilton Ohio went to Reds games too as a kid at Old Crosley Field. And I want to share a story that you are going to finish. There's a swing and a miss strike three. Pat goes to a game. Tell the fans how how old you were and then you catch a foul ball and they give you a contract at that time and you still have that contract. Still still have the contract and I still have the baseball when I caught it 1968 or whatever it is way back in the day. And then you end up playing Major League Baseball as well and then broadcasting for years and years going back to 93. I never played for him. <laughs> Which would have been nice. Tulowitzki takes a strike. Well, what you did do made your major league debut with the Cubs, and who would have thought in 2016 they would finally win their World Series? Yeah, Cubs versus the Indians, two of my other my other teams that I played for. Good for them. I, I'm happy for Joe Madden. I'm happy for the city of Chicago. I'm happy for all those Cub fans because they're like rock stars. Those those Cub players. It was such a long time coming, and you played at Wrigley Field. Mm -hmm. Now it's the Blue Jays trying to get back to the playoffs for a third time and get to the World Series and maybe win a third championship. Tulowitzki in his first spring training game grounded out to the mound his first time up. Count two and one. This is probably it for Tulowitzki. Also, Gibby was saying this morning that he wants to get him just a couple of at bats, and it's nice that he's facing big league pitching. Swing and a miss. There is nothing worse than getting your first spring trading game and all of a sudden you're facing a guy you don't know anything about. You got a chance to face Alex Cobb his first time up and now Ryan Garten faced him last year. 
Bautista limbering up on deck as is his custom. Pitches outside ball three. Just a difficult spring training with the World Baseball Classic for all managers. You talk about a juggling act. There it is. Yeah. The pitching staff, the, the biggest job that a manager has is juggling his pitching staff and getting everybody the work that they need. 3 2 fastball painted on the inside corner. Garten gets to Lewitsky. Two then, down. But then you have your everyday players that you have to. To worry about. Well, the one guy they don't have to worry about is Jose Bautista because he is ready in my mind. He's ready to to start the not just the WBC. I think he's ready to start the regular season. 3 0 pitch that he hammers down the left field line for yet another extra base hit for him and he's feeling so good he's able to steal third base. His first steal of the spring. Well, Jose he's, he's ready to get it rolling. Two down here in the fourth inning. A strike on the inside corner. If you're Garten you know after the game there'll be text messages galore. Hey you struck out Troy to you faced Jose Bautista. <laughs> The Clearwater kid into his windup. Strike on the just missed the outside corner there. That's a pretty good pitch. If you're going to miss, miss like that. Well, he's got some natural cutting action on his fastball. Comes right over the top. Keeps that ball down and away to the right handers. There's a shot between third and short. Another hit for Bautista. Look at him. Well, he missed his spot that time. He wanted to go right back to that same spot, down and away with that cat cut fastball, but he left it out over the plate. And when you're swinging the bat as hot as Jose Bautista is, see it and just let it go. Jose's got a pretty good sense of humor, too. We were at the batting cage with him, and he was laughing, saying that I'm going to Bradenton tomorrow, be with the Dominican Republic. Thursday, we play Canada. And watch me hit a game winning home run and be the most hated man in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> From the most beloved to the hated. He's going to play left field for the Dominican Republic team. Because Nelson Cruz is going to play right field. Here sits a two hopper down to third. Longoria flawless as can be. Slick fielding goes to second. That takes care of Bautista. And the inning is over. So identical totals with each club a run four hits and no errors here as we go to the fifth Blue Jays and Rays. to watch the action this season then at Rogers Center 6 12 and 20 game packs are now available call 416-341-1234 or bluejays.com slash game packs. John Birdie comes on to play second base for the Blue Jays Darwin Barney who was there goes to short as Troy Tulowitzki's first game now is in the books. The designated hitter number Marco two, Estrada Nick with that new Friedman. revamp lineup up the middle of the diamond here to come out and face Rowdy excuse me face Nick Franklin the designated hitter followed by Malik Smith and then the top of the order Corey Dickerson get some left handed batters this inning good time to use that change up 
probably his last inning. He's scheduled for 25 pitches. There's a shot by a diving Telez at first base, a base hit. And Pat looked like he picked out a first pitch fastball right there, which a hitter's game plan usually is to do just that. Well, if you're facing a guy who's got a great changeup and a good curveball, like Marco Estrada has, why wait around till he gets to two strikes? First pitch you see, let it go. Nick Franklin's going to make this team, I believe, as a utility player. He can play the outfield, any position on the infield. And swinging a little bit, too. Malik Smith, left handed hitter, good bunner, speed up at the plate. He takes it low, ball one. I think of Estrada here, who's so effective both from the stretch and the windup. It goes back to Greg Maddox when on his Hall of Fame. Career, he was with Atlanta under pitching coach Leo Mazzoni, and they had met for the first time. Maddox was a Chicago Cub, and then they traded him to Atlanta. There's a strike called, and Mazzoni took Greg out to the bullpen. He started to warm up, and he pitched from the stretch, the stretch, and the stretch. And finally, Mazzoni said, Greg, what about the windup? And he said, Coach, I'll get there, but when I'm in need of a big pitch it's from the stretch there's a ground ball to short Barney to second birdie back to first not in time and Leo said it was a real eye opener because Maddox started from the stretch because that's when he needed his best pitches in the game he was always two three four steps ahead of everybody he was way ahead of everybody he had guys set up in the first inning he wasn't going to pitch him that way if he needed to pitch to him later in the game with guys on base, he might show him something. He might give up a base. And he give up a base to Tony Gwynn. I heard that story one time. He said, you know what, 2 0, I'm going to throw Tony Gwynn a fastball right there in the first inning. He's going to slap it into the outfield. But I'm not going to show him that pitch in the eighth inning with the tying run at second base. Smart. So, pinch runner comes in for Malik Smith at first base. A 1 1 tie here, Rays bat in the fifth inning. Double play still in order. Corey Dickerson up. He has flied out and singled the left and scored the Rays lone run back in the third inning. From the stretch, swing and a miss, strike one. We bring all that up with Greg Maddox because Estrada is as effective as anybody with that changeup from the stretch. He works at it. 33 year old veteran born in Sonora, Mexico. As a youngster, his mom moved him to Southern California for an opportunity to do more, and he has certainly maximized that. His mom, Marissa. The pitch is outside, the runner goes, the throw, and out at second base is Smith. He stayed in the game. So Malik Smith is gone. It was real easy to determine that that was him, it was number zero. <laughs> One of the things you want to do if you're a pitcher. And you're going to help your catchers. Give them a good pitch to throw on when a guy's stealing. That pitch that Russell Martin got to handle was almost like a pitch out. Fastball up and away. He had a great transfer from the glove to the hand, and he threw a strike to second base to get a very fast runner. That's where Kevin Cash takes a look at him, too, and sees what can you do against a great catcher like that. And a pitcher who knows what he's doing to a quick release to the plate. 2 1 pitch hit into the air into center field deep. Back goes Pilar still running. He's at the wall and makes a basket catch a la Willie Mays to end the inning. Kevin Pilar, who so often has left his feet in center field, did not do that there. And fighting the wind makes a brilliant catch. Kevin is so good. So there you go. Kevin Pilar takes us now to the bottom of the fifth in a 1 1 game.
run for the Rays as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. A 1-1 tie, and that left-hander goes by the name of Justin Marks. He's 29 years old. He was selected by the Oakland Athletics in the third round back in 2009. He was traded to the Kansas City Royals in 2010, and he has been around. He has pitched for the A's and the Royals, went back to the A's again, Texas, the Diamondbacks organization, and now here the Rays in 2016. Will probably start the season in Triple A. If they need another left-hander to come out of the bullpen, Marks will be your guy. A new left fielder as well, Jake Bowers, goes into the game for Tampa Bay as Rowdy Telez comes to the play here. Rowdy struck out looking back in the second inning. So Marks into his motion. The pitch hit foul off to the left-hand side. Jose Bautista opened the second with a double stole third. Steve Pierce drove him home with a sacrifice fly just like that. It was one nothing. Corey Dickerson with one out in the Rays third single. Wild pitch to second home on a two out hit to right by Evan Longoria. All that off the starters. Stroman gave up the hit to Longoria. Cobb gave up the double and the run scored to the Blue Jays. And we are in the fifth inning of a one one game. Good opportunity here for Rowdy Telez to show his manager that he can handle left-handed pitching. You get a lot of breaking balls from Justin Marks. He's been around again. He's 29 years old, so Rowdy Telez is going to have to stay on that breaking ball. Swing and a miss by the big man. He is gone, and Rowdy just is close to becoming a complete player to make himself a major league player. On March the 16th, and we're not talking about too many days from now, he turns just 22, a 30th round pick by the Blue Jays in 2013. And Pat, he works at his game. He wants to be a consummate professional, not just a power hitter. He's always wanted to be the best at everything in the game. He's got a chance to do that. Melvin Upton takes strike one. He was signed to go to USC, which is a great baseball program in Southern California. Ended up taking the Blue Jays' money. And he's knocking on the door, Jerry. He is, and when he knocks, he might knock that door down <laughs> <laughs> after he gets started. That's Rowdy Telez, Ryan John Telez. And we talked to him a little bit in spring training about that name, Rowdy. The pitch hit on the ground is short. That's fielded by Beckham. Takes his time, snap the throw to first. Two down. He said, I was always moving around in my mom's stomach. My grandmother started calling me Baby Rowdy, and I've been <laughs> Rowdy ever since. So we'll see if number one can make it to the Blue Jays. You have to like his chances sometime in 2017. You've got Steve Pierce with that sore elbow getting better. Justin Smoke, switch hitter, trying to find more contact. And Edwin now with Cleveland. So there's an opportunity there, for Telez. He's got to go down to AAA. And I, and I like what the Blue Jays have done over the last couple of seasons where they're taking their prospects and they're keeping them at those, those levels in the minor leagues for a full year. Rowdy spent the whole year last year in double A. Dominate a, a, a level before you move on to the next one. Barney, a very reliable role player with a 2 0 count here. He grounded out to third his first time up. Darwin punches one into center field. That's going to drop in front of Kevin Kiermeyer. And when you drop one in front of Kiermeyer, you've earned it. What a valuable player Darwin Barney is all that he does and his temperament his ability to communicate with teammates always ready for when the manager calls upon him. Those players are special. There are not too many of them in the game and he knows his role. His role is as a backup player to fill in. And if the guy goes on the disabled list he might play two weeks at, at one position while the guys are but he's ready. He keeps himself ready keeps himself sharp and he can play. It's a good pickup a couple of years ago. The pitch is low to Jake Elmore. Darwin grew up in Oregon, born in Portland. And there's not a lot of baseball up there, having the pleasure of calling games for the Tacoma Twins for two years and working with the University of Puget Sound. There's a lot of rain up in that area that takes away from California, Texas, Florida, playing baseball all year round. Elmore with a strike. And I asked Darwin, did you also like the University of Puget Sound baseball team? Did you use those hard rubber baseballs on the asphalt to get loose when the field was ruined? He said, yes, a lot of times you had to do that. 
take ground balls on the asphalt parking lot with those baseballs that were hard and give you the opportunity anyway to work on your coordination. Those rubber coated hard balls. The, yes. Those type of taking ground balls. That's like playing ground balls with super balls. <laughs> bing, 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 bing. <laughs> they take off on you. That's what you have to do in Oregon and Washington. Elmore hits a ground ball weakly to the right side. Fielded nicely by Miller. He throws it on to first. And that is that. So five innings here in Dunedin, Florida. The Blue Jays won. The Rays won each team with five hits. Fans, Blue Jays opening week is presented by Honda. It's the Brewers and your Blue Jays, April 11th and 12th. The Honda home opener is sold out. Then the Orioles are in town April 13th to the 16th. For tickets, visit BlueJays.com. Jerry. Thank you, Hazel. We go to the sixth inning. Coming on, Roberto Osuna, who then will leave for the World Baseball Classic to pitch for Team Mexico in left field. Dwight Smith Jr. in this 1-1 game as we go to the sixth inning. Kevin Kiermeyer, Evan Longoria, and Brad Miller here against Osuna. Kiermeyer's doubled and struck out. Roberto's first pitch, strike one called. Well, what a day for us up here in the booth. Marcus Stroman starts, and after Aaron Loop picks him up, gets the last out in the third inning. Marco Estrada now followed by Roberto Osuna doesn't get any better than that on the mound and Marco is with us in the Blue Jays first base dugout as the foul goes off toward the right hand side. Marco did you try to field that ball I know you're a pretty good fielding pitcher. <laughs> hey guys. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Spring train I'm, I'm trying to get my guys to work a little bit. <laughs> How'd you feel did you feel pretty comfortable today. I did um, it's different you know um, I went off three bullpens I didn't face any hitters. Uh, they asked me if. You know, if I was ready to go, and I told him, yeah, let's, let's just let's get some work in, um, try and locate your pitches, and, and take the fans in and everything. Uh, you know, even though it's spring training, a, a little bit of adrenaline kicks in, and and you know, you, you just want to get that feeling all over again. So it's good to be out there. A little bit shorter off season for you, Marco, with the Blue Jays going uh, into the playoffs. Any change to your routine, or did you keep it just about the same heading into spring training? No, I kept it exactly the same. Um, the last few years I haven't really pitched too much out here and and I told him I kind of like that program. Uh, I feel like I get enough. Uh, you know you just you want to get out there and repeat your delivery and whatnot. Um, and like I said you take the fans in and, and the little bit of adrenaline that's going in. Um, so I'm in a good place right now you know it's, it's still very early it still feels awkward being out there but it, it's going to get there. Is there a set amount of innings you'd like to pitch down here in Florida. No. Um, I'd like to at one point at least you know get up to four or five innings so if I can get to that I, I'm going to be pretty happy I think last year I'm not even sure if I got up to five innings but I felt good and I told him I feel good and um, next thing you know they, they tell me you got Boston first game so I'm like all right let's, let's do it. <laughs> well soon enters the game as he strikes out Kiermaier Marco right now there are people watching who are either parents or kids and 
they're maybe coaches, and you are known for your changeup, and rightfully so. What would you suggest to them? How do you start telling a young pitcher to throw a changeup, and how's the best way to learn that? Yeah, it's all about arm speed. You know, you want to you want to make it look like you're throwing a fastball every time. The the movement doesn't really matter. Uh, I focus more on just the the pitch perception and, or or the 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 differential in speed. And um, I don't really worry about movement, to be honest with you. I think the ones I threw today um, weren't too bad, uh, but the, the the speed differential was there, and, and that's all that really matters. Um, that, that's all I tell the kid. Just make sure, or if you can, somehow get that 10 mile an hour difference. When did you start to throw a changeup? Oh, it was like high A. Um, it's, a it's a pitch that kind of just came natural to me for some reason. Um, I asked one of the guys, you know, struggling out there, just throwing fastball curveballs. And I asked one of the one of the, my teammates said, hey, I, I kind of need a third pitch. So how do you throw your changeup? You've got a really good one. Um, he showed me the grip. And two days later, I'm throwing it in a game. Next thing I know, I'm, I'm getting swings and misses off of it. So that's basically how it developed. Well, it's such a key pitch for you. And one of your teammates is at the plate here for the Rays. That's when you were at Long Beach State with Evan Longoria and Troy Tulowitzki. The pitch yeah. is inside. You didn't throw a changeup much then when you were in college? I might have thrown five changeups the entire season, and wow. it was something that I, yeah, I just never really practiced. Um, I had a really good curveball, but, you know, in college, the seams are a lot bigger, so it was easier for me to throw it. And once I got into pro ball, those seams shrunk up quite a bit, so I made it tough to throw a curveball, and, and I realized, you know, I, I'm going to have to pick up a third pitch. Marco, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Has any of your players, your teammates, come up to you and say, hey, how do you hold that changeup? I want to learn that thing. Yeah, a lot of guys. Uh, usually throughout the season, guys are like, I, you know, I want to try and pick that up. And I, I show them it's a simple grip, four seam. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a simple four four seam grip. You know, um, like I said, it's all about arm action, just selling it. And uh, it, it, some guys just can do it, some can't. And and there are guys on this team that don't need it. Um, and I've told them, you don't need it. Don't worry about it. another pitch. You've got great stuff already. So. Um, but it, you know, it's always nice to have that. Well, you're like fine wine. You just get keep getting better and better with age. What is it uh, since you've turned 30? We're showing a board here how you have just dominated Major League Baseball. It's the mindset, you know, and I, I've said it a million times. Just talking to Burley, um, it's completely changed my mindset, and, and you know, I think that's the toughest part about this game is getting that right mindset going. Um, and once I, you know, talk to him and, and kind of realize what he was thinking while he's out there, which is almost nothing uh, you, you go out there and you try to create the same thing and it's just made pitching it's, it's not it's not easy but it has made it easier um, so I just try to keep a clear head and and, and basically trusting Russ that, that's really what it comes down to I, I trust Russ with everything I, I don't shake him um, I'm con I have conviction behind every single pitch and I think that's why things have changed for me you are so modest and unassuming and when you say Burley Mark Burley was such a factor for you, and you highlight him. Way to go, Marco. Of course. He's the guy. <laughs> he is certainly the guy. What a career he had. Strike three call. Marco, thank you very much. Really enjoyed your visit and your pitching here today. Awesome. Thank you, guys. You are more than welcome. That's Marco Estrada. Now, what a treat he is. Well, here through now five and a half innings, Blue Jays won, the Rays won.
Sports.net's continuing coverage of Blue Jays spring training resumes on Tuesday as the Jays host Canada's World Baseball Classic team right here in Dunedin. Two days later, you can see Freddie Freeman and Team Canada face Jose Batista and the Dominican Republic in the WBC. All the action gets underway at 6 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet One. Looking forward to that, Jerry. Hazel, and in this 1-1 game, sixth inning, the Rays go to their bullpen again for right-hander Jake Faria. He's a big one. Tenth round draft pick in 2011. Couple of stops last year between double A AA and triple A, 27 starts. He was an all star in the Southern League. He pitched in that game and then he was moved right up to triple A Durham. Fastball, curveball, 157 strikeouts, which was second among Tampa Bay Ray minor leaguers. Batters hit only 201 against Faria in 2016. Big, strong right hander has never pitched in the major leagues. And this must feel a little bit like a major league game for him. Kevin Pilar will start it off. In the leadoff spot, he is single to right, then thrown out trying to steal second and hit into a double play. First pitch swing, he hits one to right center field. Deep, moving back for it. Jimmy Field, the ball's over his head, diving for it, couldn't make a play. The throw back to the infield. Kevin tiptoes in with a stand-up double. Now, Pilar has been hitting the ball with authority this spring. He's shortened everything up, his leg kick. He's, he hasn't eliminated it, but he has shortened it up just a little bit. He looks balanced at the plate. He's hitting the ball with authority the other way. Watching him take those nice, comfortable, under control swings, you can see he's got extra base pop in that bat. So Pilar with the double to right center. Daryl Siciliani now will run for him and stay in the game in the outfield. As Reese McGuire, who came on last inning for Russ Martin, now will step to the plate for his first at bat, trying to break a 1 1 tie here with the Rays in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the first pitch, fastball, that's in there for a strike. Martin in this spot, lined out to second and struck out. Reese is a great young man, came over in the Francisco Liriano deal with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Siciliani, the lead, the ball hit on the ground, the first nicely backhanded there by Weeks. Go to the pitcher covering at the bag. The play is made. Good job by McGuire to get the runner over. Well, his strong point is his defense, but his bat is starting to come along. He got a runner at second base. Just like Bautista, who led off the second inning with the double. Blue Jays are able to get him over to third base. Good situational hitting by McGuire. Now the infield has to come in. And John Birdie will come up here. Right handed hitter, a 1 1 tie, sixth inning. Fastball is inside from Faria. That's a good at bat, too. This is where you look at someone like McGuire, and really in the long run, while Francisco Liriano was so valuable last year and now figures to be a quality fifth starter this season, the Pirates named Reese McGuire their first round pick, 14th overall back in 2013. Pitch is hit down the right field line by Birdie at slicing, dropping, foul by the length of a bat. But those are the kind of trades that not only does it help you in the present mode, but keep that name in mind, Reese McGuire, behind the plate, because for years the Blue Jays have had a difficult time creating and developing catchers. Yeah, they, they got their share of catchers to the big league. Jay Pierre and Sebia comes to mind, but he was only there just a couple of years. I know the Blue Jays are really high on McGuire and Harold Ramirez, the other player that came over in that Drew Hutchison trade. That's how you restock your farm system when you're able to make trades like that and get some pretty high prospects from the other organization. Maria set. Pitches outside, blocked nicely by the catcher. It was back in 2015 that Alex Anthopoulos had to really deplete the farm system but acquiring David Price and Troy Tulowitzki and so many others it was really worth it in hindsight when you see what's happened the last two years. Well sometimes you have to go for it you know, the Blue Jays went for it in 2015. Now they are trying to keep winning and then restock that farm system. 
It had been 22 years. Three and one the count here on John Birdie. Spells that last name B E R T I. He's a 27 year old from Troy, Michigan. He takes a strike on the inside corner. Birdie was picked by the Blue Jays way back in 2011 out of Bowling Green University, 18th round. And now trying to make his mark. He was in Double A New Hampshire, Triple A Buffalo last season. Can run just a little bit. He can hit the ball the other way. Right now, he's thinking about hitting the ball to right field or back through the middle. And the full count pitch to him. Ground ball hit the short side. Here comes the run and throw to the plate. High and away. Head first slide. Siciliani scores. The Blue Jays go out in front two to one on a ball put in play nicely there by John Birdie. Well, the problem that Beckham had at shortstop is he laid back on off on that ball that when he caught it he threw it flat footed. His momentum couldn't bring him into that play to make that play at the plate. Siciliani is going on contact and when Beckham caught the ball he had to flip throw off his back foot and that caused the ball to go up into the air. You know, he stepped back on that ball, couldn't charge through it on the in-between hop, and Birdie has an RBI. And the Blue Jays have the lead. Here's Bautista. He's doubled and scored and singled sharply on the ground to the left. Pitch is outside. And Siciliani sold out there, too, with that head first slide. Well, the Blue Jays are playing the contact play. That's when there's a runner at third base in the infield in. You are going on contact. So you have to time that ball across the plate. If it's on the ground, you're going. Jose takes a strike. Birdie back at first base. His dad, Tom, spent two years in the Detroit organization. He was a shortstop second baseman, much like Birdie, an infielder. That was in Lakeland, Florida. And a great influence on his son, John, who gets his lead at first base. Pitch on the way, fouled off right hand side. We we're talking to John about his dad. And he said, Chipper Jones, Ken Griffey Jr., they were great players for me to watch, but nobody was a bigger hero for me than my father. That's how it should be, right? Sure. Like father, like son, and Birdie has advanced more than the two years his dad spent in that Tigers organization, but good bloodlines there in the Birdie family. Faria is set. And cuts it loose. Bounces it to the plate. There goes the runner, Birdie. There's no play. And on a wild pitch, Birdie scoops up 90 feet. Well, we told you he can run just a little bit. He had some seasons down in the minor leagues where he stole his share of bags. Two strikes. You anticipate the ball in the dirt. You figure with a big slugger up there like Bautista, you're thinking breaking ball in the dirt. You're anticipating that and watching Birdie. Takes his lead, his secondary lead, and right away he reads it that that ball is going to bounce in front of home plate and makes it in the scoring position without a throw. And Jonah Heim did a good job there just to keep it in front of him, but had no play. Breaking ball. Good pitch, good eye by Bautista. That was close. Three balls and two strikes. Nick Lentz behind the plate here today for the umpiring crew. The other umpires move around. Phil Cuzzy started at first. He's at second now. That happens in spring training. Long stretch. 3-2 pitch. Hit on the ground sharply to third. Backhanded nicely by Conrad. Throw it on to first on a bounce. And picked beautifully by Ricky Weeks, who's playing a new position. He's been a longtime second baseman. To third base comes Birdie, and Weeks is making a statement here as a non roster player to make this Tampa Bay team. He has opened up some eyes in the Tampa Bay Rays organization with his bat. He came into this game hitting over 700 in this game. Again, Logan Morrison has been out with some injuries, so he's had some chances now over at first base, and he picked that one clean. Nice play. So, John Birdie at third base, Blue Jays trying to add to their two to one lead, sixth inning. Steve Pierce up drove in a run with a sacrifice fly to right that was in the second and then bounced into a fielder's choice rounding one down to third in the fourth. He hit one down to third with Evan Longoria in the lineup not now but 
you do that your chances are not too good of succeeding the pitch is inside. Luis Rivera coaching at third base goes up and a quick chat with Bertie. And I'm sure what he's telling him is Faria's thrown the ball all over the place. He's bounced a couple of balls already. You're at third base. If there is a short wild pitch go ahead and be aggressive. See if you can score another run. Swing and a miss. Quick throw to third, and it almost sailed in the left field. And then, after <laughs> jumping, the third baseman, Jace Conrad, went down the line trying to decoy Birdie into breaking toward home plate. And Birdie said, No, I've seen that before. Probably his dad taught him that. <laughs> Don't go for that. One of the great decoys in World Series history, the 91 World Series one. Lonnie Smith was decoyed at second base by Chuck Knobloch, did not score on a double. And the Twins won it behind Jack Morris in game seven, one to nothing. The pitch is outside. Decoys, you have to watch. I'm sure you played the infield. Did, mm -hmm. did you do that a lot? Sure, sure, especially on uh, a runner taking off from first base. And if you're playing in the middle infield, decoying like the ball's on the ground and it's in, really in the gap. All kind of things like that, little tricks that you can do, right? Lonnie Smith never saw that ball. I saw John Sherholtz, the general manager of Atlanta, after that, and he was so upset at that play, which cost them dearly. Pierce lines one to center field, dropping base hit in front of Kevin Kiermaier. Birdie scores. A big two out hit for Pierce, and the Blue Jays go out in front three to one. Well, that is why he is on this team. He can deliver clutch RBIs like that. Runner at third base, less than two outs. You want to cut down your swing. You don't want to have one of those long, wild, crazy swings. He cuts him down and he's rewarded with an RBI single. That's how you have a good two strike, two out approach. Let's go, Rowdy! The batter, Rowdy Telez. A two run sixth inning here for the lead. Velez takes it outside ball one. Pat just want to highlight what Pierce did there. It's a spring training game two outs. You talk about a clutch hit. You were 43 for 88 in your career hitting with the bases loaded. You just missed by one hit hitting 500. Well 49 is pretty good in and of itself. And that leads to the question how do you relax in situations like that which obviously you did extremely well. The pitch is outside. How do you do that? There are guys who can do it, like Steve Pierce. It, it, it's all between your head. And, and confidence has a lot to do with it. But if you don't try and do too much, I, I was watching Pierce in that at bat, and you can see what was going through his mind. He was thinking about, I'm not going to try and pull the ball. I'm not going to have a long swing. I'm just going to try and stay within myself, hit the ball back through the middle, and I'm going to be rewarded with a base hit. I was out here yesterday watching him work with Brooke Jacoby, batting coach of the Blue Jays, and they are working on that, that his timing was off just a little bit. He was a little bit late. He says, you know, get your foot down, calm things down, slow things down just a little bit, and things are going to be, be, be better. I think that's why he's a good RBI man, because he's got a nice short comeback swing. And he's confident. He doesn't try and do too much when he's in those RBI situations. Two and one account here on Telez. And the delivery foul back. How did you do that with the pace? Same thing. I didn't try and do too much. The same thing that I was just talking about with Steve Pierce is wasn't a big home run hitter. So here's your chance to drive in some runs. Let's keep it simple. Let's just try and hit the ball back through the middle. Let's have a good two strike approach. Let's try and use the whole field. Let's don't play into what the pitcher's trying to do to you. He's throwing you breaking balls. Recognize that and go the other way. I think that's what makes good RBI people. They're not necessarily big home run hitters, but they're just smart, good hitters. Ask Greg Zahn that question here with a full count on Telez. He said, I was always nervous in those situations until my manager, Frank Robinson, said, Greg, all the pressure is on the pitcher. Remember that. And he said, that really turned things around for me. It, it, it's wise, very sage advice. The pressure is on the pitcher to come to you. Don't try and do too much. Runner goes 3 2 pitch slashed on the left hand side gathered in by the third baseman Conrad throw it on the first. Telez is retired. Nice stop there by weeks again. 
and Ricky is doing a good job there defensively let alone hitting better than 700 as Pat mentioned. So the Blue Jays get a couple of here on RBIs by John Birdie and Steve Pierce. Three one we go to the seventh. Broadcasting 11 Blue Jays spring training games, but you can catch every single game this spring with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today, your number one app for live baseball. Jerry. Thank you, Hazel. The Blue Jays make a number of changes here. Let's start on the mound. Veteran Joe Smith, who Pitched for the Chicago Cubs last year and did not make the playoff roster after an outstanding September. Still has a World Series ring that he'll treasure for the rest of his career. John Birdie moves over to third base. Darwin Barney stays at short with now Jake Elmore shifting over to second. That's some of that utility versatility we have from Elmore. Dwight Smith in left, Daryl Siciliani in center, and J.B. Woodman is in right. There's a first pitch strike from Smith to the Veteran Ricky Weeks Jr. for Tampa Bay. Seventh inning, raised down three to one now. Joe Smith out of Wright State University, that's in Dayton, Ohio, has been around. Gets a two hopper down to short. Barney throws him out. And when he is on, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of ground ball outs. He's pitched for the Indians, he has pitched for the Angels and the Cubs. You mentioned that last year with the Cubs and now comes over here with the Blue Jays, signs as a free agent. To fill in that back end of the bullpen. Sinker slider, lots of ground balls when he's on. And a sidearm or two where the last sidearm I could remember as a Blue Jay who was so effective was the 86 Sporting News rookie of the year, Mark Icorn. There's a strike called here to Tim Beckham. That's a tough pitch to read, isn't it, as a hitter? Well, especially right handers. And he does a pretty good job of getting left handers out, but for right handers, sinker one way. Like that, and then slider another way. That makes it tough on you. What I like about that signing is it gives the Blue Jays a different look. You mentioned the last one that you can remember is Mark Icon. You got to go back 30 years. I love having different looks coming out of the bullpen. Lefties, righties, hard throwers, breaking ball pitchers, sidearm pitchers. Just the other day, the Blue Jays were in Bradenton, saw that game against Pittsburgh. One of the coaches. There as an advisor is Kent to Culvey, another one. Pitch is fouled off to the right. Pat, you played for the Kansas City Royals mm -hmm. and the late great Dan Quisenberry yeah. probably put sidearm pitching quiz. on the mound. He was, he was awesome. Tough to, to pick up hit. He was a closer from down under. Awfully tough. He also got the kid in Baltimore who's a, who's a great sidewinder, Aaron O'Day. And the one two pitch swing and a miss he struck him out and he goes right in on his hands to do it. See what that whole at bat was set up by the slider that he fed to Beckham that he fouled off. 
as a right-handed hitter against a right-handed pitcher like Joe Smith, you're thinking away or you're thinking in. The previous pitch was a slider away, just barely got a tick up, and you can see can't extend through that breaking ball or that fastball in the inner half that time. Jonah Heim, the catcher, comes up first at bat. Left-handed hitter here against the right-hander, Smith, who pumps in strike one called. Mark Icorn not only was the Sporting News Rookie of the Year in 86, he came back to the Blue Jays after leaving and having a distinguished career. And what did he do? He won two World Series rings, part of the Blue Jays in 92 and 3. As Heim gets hit here with that Smith pitch at 88 miles an hour. And guess who's wearing number 38 on the mound? Joe Smith. That's the same, same number, number that Mark Icorn wore, Pat. So Heim gets hit. Not a lot of fun. Nick Schofo comes up here to act as the designated hitter for Nick Franklin. The one Nick replacing another. Schofo takes it outside ball one. I want to correct that pronunciation. That's Shufo. Nick Shufo. He hits one foul off to the right hand side into a, a pretty good sized crowd here at Florida Auto Exchange Stadium. You look around and a lot of Blue Jays gear here as you would expect and the place holds 5500. They'll, they'll be pushing that here today. Tomorrow is an off day. And then join us on Tuesday. The Blue Jays right here against Team Canada for the World Baseball Classic. That'll be fun. Yeah we'll be right here doing the game. To see some of the young Canadian stars. Shufo is set. So is Smith. He puts in a strike. For me, the person who's going to gain the most from that Team Canada situation is Dalton Pompey with regular at bats playing center field as opposed to sharing them perhaps with Melton, with Melvin Upton and Ezekiel Carrera. And his chance to do something. There's a line drive off the glove of Jake Elmore at second. No play. And the Rays continue the seventh inning here. And Jake probably saying to himself, I had that right there in my glove. And, and what I mean about Dalton getting a chance to play on a regular basis, four at bats, get out there, show them what you can do, and then come back here and try and make the team. Jake Elmore, normally a very sure handed infielder, this we ball might have been knuckling out towards him because it really see. handcuffed him. Hustling after it to try and run it down and get the play over at first base, but that ball hit so hard and it's probably knuckling, meaning it was moving all over the place. Handcuffed Elmo, Elmore. Well, the Rays now down three to one, have two men on, two outs, Smith's pitch. Inside ball one to Johnny Field. Smith here trying to pick up his teammate behind him. On the lead at second, chasing that pitch is field. It's one ball and one strike. Nasty. If you've got fastball on your mind from Joe Smith and he throws you that slider right there, your right handed batter, you got no chance. <laughs> no chance. A look back. Making ball strike two call. Nice pitch. So Elmore is charged with an error. That's finally the official scorer's decision right here. And I think in fairness, that's probably a good scoring decision. Yeah. Right at him. The runners lead with two down. Pitch on the way. Fastball strike three called. Great job by Joe Smith. And if you're Jake Elmore, you'll be the first one to get to that dugout and congratulate him. So we go to the bottom of the seventh inning here in Dunedin. Beautiful day. Blue Jays three, Rays one.
Our play of the game is brought to you by New Scott's Lawn Response 911. A three in one solution that rescues your lawn. Well, when you get the Blue Jays and Rays hooked up against each other, you know the center fielders are going to make a great catch, and we get to see another great catch this afternoon by the Blue Jay Kevin Pilar, ranging far to his left into the gap in right center field, a la Willie Mays as he pulls it in with a basket catch. We normally see him leave his feet. He didn't have to that time. That catch by Pilar is this afternoon's play of the game. And for me as a kid, I saw that all the time. Yeah, that's nothing new, <laughs> is it? <laughs> no, it isn't. Hunter Wood comes on a raised 29th round pick back in 2013. Born in a very appropriate city of Arkansas. Yes, born in Rogers, Arkansas. He should be a Blue Jay. He should be a Blue Jay. Split last season between Class A Charlotte and Double A Montgomery. Second among the raised minor leaguers in earned run average. He gave up two hits or fewer in six of his 18 starts. Dwight Smith will start it off and hits one foul off to the left. <laughs> Melvin Upton in this spot went 0 for 2. Fly it out to left, ground it out to short. Darwin Barney is on deck and then Jake Elmore. Wood into his windup. Cuts it loose. Fastball. Good one for a strike. No balls and two strikes. Dwight Sr. played eight years in the major leagues with the Atlanta Club and the Chicago Cubs. Now his son, a first round pick by the Blue Jays a number of years ago, trying to get to the show as well. Ground ball off the mound of the glove of the pitcher, throw it to first in time. They get him one down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers, Blue Jays baseball partnership, and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Nice recovery there off that ball hit off the glove of Hunter Wood there by the second baseman. So with that one out here's Barney. Darwin takes strike one call Barney one for two with a single to center. Blue Jays scored in the second. Bautista doubled the left to open it up off starter Alex Cobb. Stole third, and Steve Pierce brought him home with a sacrifice fly. Ground ball pulled down to third. It's off the glove of the third baseman. The ball kicks over to third base and the shortstop. Jace Conrad couldn't make that play, and Barney reaches on an error. Well, this time of the day, the fields get chewed up, it gets hard. You're going to get a lot of tough hops. The Rays have committed at least one error now in nine of their last 10 spring games. Third ball to Barney. Looked like a pretty nice hop for the third baseman, Conrad, but it just ate him up. And that should go down as an error, E5. Shane Opitz comes in to pinch run now for Darwin. That ends his day as Jake Elmore takes strike, takes the first pitch that misses ball one. They do the best that they can on these fields, but it's it's tough. tough. It's this time of the day that that thing gets baked. They don't really drag it in between innings. You got cuff marks, scuff marks all over the field. Divots taken out of it. I mean, you're not going to get a true hop. The worst bad hop ground ball I ever saw was in Cleveland at then Cleveland Stadium. Dave <laughs> Steve needing a no hitter, two down, a ground ball to second off the bat of Julio Franco, and somehow it hit something on that dirt and bounced five feet over second baseman Manny Lee's head. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> there goes the, the no hitter. It was right there. Never seen a bad hop worse than that. Pitch hit on the line into right field, a base hit for Elmore. And opens up to second base. Elmore does a nice job. That's two hits in his first game as a Blue Jay. He had three hits. Stays behind the ball. Just drills it into right field. That makes up for the error that he had last inning. Pinch runner now, Yeltsin Godino is at first base for the Blue Jays. Daryl Siciliani, left-handed hitter, takes strike one called. So Elmore leaves for a pinch hitter. 
90 has been worn here in spring training camp by Eduardo Oliveras. We saw that yesterday in Bradenton. And now he just passes the baton <laughs> <laughs> and says, you wear number 90, Yeltsin. You know, I, I like when the Jays, they go down into their farm system and bring up some of these kids. This might be their only chance to do something in front of the brass. That's, that's the coaches in the front office who are watching the game. The kids who come up from the minor leagues get a chance to show everybody what they can do. Blue Jays up three to one here in the bottom of the seventh. Two on one out. Fly ball right field hit pretty well. Back for it. The right fielder running out of room. Now under it he makes the catch. Tagging is the runner at second. That's the pinch runner opens. He comes to third. The throw into second. That keeps Godino at first. And wouldn't you know it when you look at those two flags in right center field. They were blowing in and Siciliani happened to hit that with an ill-timed win. Should have hit it in the first inning. <laughs> Jerry, that would have been a three-run home run. It's a fastball right down the middle of the plate. He turns on it, and right you can see the, the wind holding that thing up for the right fielder field to run it down. Well, here is Reese McGuire. Pulled a ground ball to first base back in the sixth inning, and that helped contribute to a two-run inning. It was a good job after Kevin Pillar opened the inning with a double. Reese got him over. He takes it high, ball one. John Birdie got him in with a ground ball. That broke a 1-1 tie. And then later, Steve Pierce, who had driven in the run with a sacrifice fly, cashing in Bautista's double and stolen base with a run in the second inning, drilled a two-run Drilled a single with two outs in the sixth inning to make it three to one. And that is the score here in the seventh with two gone. McGuire takes a strike. Opitz at third. Godino at first. And the right hander Wood is set. Hunter's pitch, a strike on the outside corner. We've been talking all afternoon about the the draft picks and some of the low draft picks. Hunter Wood was a 29th round draft pick. 29th, and here he is showing off what he can do. Got a good looking arm. And a full beard as well. <laughs> <laughs> the runner's set. Kick and delivery, breaking ball hit foul into the Blue Jays dugout. Watch out, duck and cover. That's where you always kind of hold your breath. I remember years ago in spring training in Arizona with the Angels, Matt Keough was hitting the head mm -hmm. with a line drive pad, and it really ended his career. You can see that fencing out in front of the dugouts there. There were times back in the day there was never that fencing out there. You better pay attention. The pitch is high. You'll recall when Al Albert Pujols became an angel. First time out there. Blue Jays went out there in April. He hit two foul balls into the third base dugout with the Angels. When he finally hit a third one there, everybody left the dugout, <laughs> including manager Mike Sosha. <laughs> the dugout was empty. It was the funniest thing. But they weren't going to. And Joe Carter did that, your teammate, mm -hmm. with the Blue Jays. He used to pull balls into the home dugout there on the third baseline. Fastball strike three called. So McGuire caught looking. Wood gets him with an off-speed pitch really at 86 miles an hour. Pretty good job. So the Blue Jays leave a couple. Can't take advantage of the air. To the eighth we go. 3-1 Blue Jays.
days off until their next game, and they'll need it to strengthen up for 48 minutes in New Orleans against Twin Towers, DeMarcus Cousins, and Anthony Davis. It's the Raptors and Pelicans Wednesday night on Sportsnet One. Thank you, Hazel. Blue Jays ahead 3-1 to one here as we go to the Rays' eighth inning and a new pitcher coming on, Bo Schultz. A familiar name for the fans back in Canada, Bo Schultz, hard-throwing right-hander. We'll get a chance to come into the ballgame. Good hard fastball slider combination. He is out of options. He's got to make the team or he's going to have to go through waivers. Already this spring, he has pitched in a couple of ball games, a couple of innings, a couple of hits, just a 228 or 227 batting average for Schultz. Bo's got an, an excellent opportunity to make this team out of the bullpen. There's still one, maybe two jobs open. I think if he shows that he can handle lefties, and he has shown that he can handle lefties in his career, he's got an excellent chance of making this team. A lot of competition in the bullpen, so he's in with strike one call to Jake Bowers here, leading off the Rays' eighth inning. Bo misses here, one ball and one strike. Godino remains in the game at shortstop, opens at second, and Bradley Jones now at first base, coming up from the minor league complex. One one pitch in for a strike. Pat last inning was talking about players coming up from the minor league complex. Years ago, calling a game on a weekend right here, the Blue Jays had called up a young outfielder, and he made a dazzling catch in deep center field. And then he did it again later in the game. That was Reed Johnson. That put him on the map. There's a base hit into right field by Bowers. No one knew too much about this kid, Reed Johnson, but they found out after that game he could play center field. He could hit, take the ball the other way, and had a long and distinguished career. Good player. Just a pro. You got your first chance to take a look at him, huh? I did. It was, yeah. and when they do that, and you take a, a second look, you raise an eyebrow or two. After the game, what do you do? You go and meet him and say, "What's your name?" Reed Johnson. <laughs> well, welcome to spring training. That was outstanding. How, how many years did he play the big leagues? A lot. And he played with a number of teams, in particular the Blue Jays. Verona up here takes strike one call. Dayron Verona. Reed is one of the few players who, with the Blue Jays, opened the game with a home run and won it with a home run in the 10th inning. All that at the Rogers Center, then Sky Dome. Pitches outside. They're pretty good bookends right there. And he was not noted as a home run hitter, but he hit the ball hard. Verona hitting here in Kevin Kiermeyer's spot. Ray's been held to a run on six hits predominantly because of the bullpen. This is only the second hit the bullpen has allowed today. Schultz misses inside. Aaron Loop came on to pick up Marcus Stroman's two and two thirds innings back in the third. He induced Brad Miller to ground out. Then Marco Estrada, two scoreless innings. He allowed the hit. Shame on him. A base hit the right field. <laughs> and then Roberto Osuna, Joe Smith, and now Bo Schultz. Two hits allowed by the pen. A strike on the outside corner. Good quality pitch there, three and zero. Oh. Marco Estrada gave up a hit, and we had him on from the dugout. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, came out of the bullpen. I don't think we've ever seen that, have we? I don't believe we have. There's a ground ball in the right field, just by a diving Shane Opitz. So going the other way is Verona. The Rays now have a couple on. Well, that's unfortunate. That's something that the the box score can't tell you. He made a good pitch on Verona, got in on him. He just muscled it. And because the second baseman was shading himself towards second base for the for the double play, they able to squeeze one through the right side of the infield. It'll go down as a base hit. Well, now the Blue Jays looking here for a double play ground ball. In Longoria's spot here, Jace Conrad, left-handed hitter. Three to one Blue Jays, but the Rays with two on nobody out here in the eighth inning. Schultz delivers, swing and a miss. Colby Rasmus and his brother Corey are both on the Rays now. Colby in the offseason had hip surgery. So it's questionable whether he'll be ready for opening day. And we bring that up because two winners ago, not this last winner, 
Bo Schultz had hip surgery. Strike one pitch is outside. We talked to Bo about that this spring, and he said it, it was major surgery. You take care of that hip, and he got off to a, a start where you're on the disabled list. You're trying to come back. That's not an easy way to begin 2016. Well, think about how much pressure you put on your legs when you deliver a pitch to, to the plate, especially for Schultz, who throws so hard. We saw him last year come up in, in Chicago. He was touching 98 miles an hour coming out of that bullpen. And when it's your landing leg, too, that's the pounding. Yeah, that, that's where you start to feel it. So he looks healthy. Throwing pretty hard this afternoon. Bo is 31, the pride of Northwestern University. Same school that produced Jay Happ. They were almost teammates. Just missed each other by a year. Here's the one two pitch. Fly ball deep right field down the line. That's hooking into the corner. It is hooking. It is foul. A foul ball. And the Rays will remain still behind three to one. That was close. Saw Kevin Cash before the game. He was signed by the Blue Jays in 99 and later made his major league debut with the Blue Jays and third year as a manager. Just a delightful young man. And he was a great catcher, learned a lot. He learned a lot from the 2017 Boston Red Sox. His manager was Terry Francona. But I said, Kevin, what do you see here? He said, Jer, to start the year, we have the Yankees in, then you, then we have to go to New York, and then to Fenway Park. That's how we start the year. <laughs> Welcome to the American League East. <laughs> it doesn't get any easier, does it? No. One, two pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Ball gets away from the catcher. Reese McGuire picks it up. The third base now first base was occupied so the hitter is out to begin with on the strikeout but the runners move up to second and third so it's a strikeout but it's a costly one as well well it takes the double play away from the Blue Jays told you that Bo Schultz has a pretty good slider slider and when it's working he can pick up his share of strikeouts after the long home run that was fouled, the long ball that was fouled down the right field line, he comes back with that slider. Conrad swings over the top of it, so he is out. But the double play taken away from the Blue Jays because of the wild pitch. Now Andrew Velazquez comes up here. Runners at second and third. Schultz pitch fouled off. This is where Bo has to use some of that experience. He made his major league debut with Arizona back in 2014. And this is where you have to stay and relax too. It's such a fast game at the major league level and those who can slow it down stay. Still need a strikeout. A strikeout or, or a pop up something where the runners can't advance. That's where I think his slider is going to be a big pitch for him in this at bat. Velasquez takes outside. So Bull Schultz. Originally signed by the Oakland A's. Not drafted out of Northwestern University. You don't see that too often from college kids. That was back in 2008. Went to Arizona. That's where the Blue Jays claimed him off waivers. He's outside. Two balls and one strike. You cannot have enough veteran pitching either at the major league level or your top farm club. You, you need it. And the Blue Jays have been fortunate over the last couple of years getting a lot of innings out of their starters. Bow is set. Look at third. Pitch on the way. Popped up foul. Third base side back out of play. And now Patty's put himself in a good situation with a 2 2 count to use that wicked breaking. Bury ball. it. Bury it right here. And you don't have to throw it for a strike. Not a lot of familiarity of Velasquez to Bo Schultz. So show him that slider. Keep it out of the strike zone. There's a good chance you're going to strike him out. Bowers at third, Verona at second. They take the lead. And the 2 2 pitch. Hit late and foul, third base side. Your catcher, Reese McGuire, you see he was late on that 89 mile an hour fastball. What do you go back to? I'm going slider down and in right here. You want to get something where he swings over the top of it and you pick up a strikeout. Two and two here on Velasquez. Lot at stake, eighth inning, spring training game, three to one Blue Jays. Runners lead. Here it comes. Ball punched into right field. That's a base hit. 
Taken on a hop by Woodman. One run into score. Runners at first and third. Rays come to within one now, trailing three to two. Well, he had him set up for something out of the strike zone, but he caught too much of the plate. Remember the hitters, he's starting to shorten things up, and he wants to just try and make contact and put it in play. So if you go breaking ball or if you go fastball, you can you can expand the strike zone and hope that he swings over the top of it. It's down the middle. It's up just a little bit where he can just dump it into right field. Casey Gillespie comes up here to pinch hit for Ricky Weeks. His older brother Connor, a big leaguer. This is Casey. Pitch on the way, line to center field. That's a base hit. We'll go to right center field. Siciliani cuts it off. A run into score. Daryl drops it around third, getting the wave home. Velasquez. There's no throw. Velasquez into score. A double for Gillespie off the bench, and Tampa Bay is taking a four to three lead. Well, he's not waiting around at all to get the two strikes. First fastball that he sees, he jumps all over. Bo Schultz trying to slip that fastball by him, and Gillespie rattles the cage into the outfield. Trying to come up with it quickly, get it back in, bobbles it momentarily. And I think that's going to allow Velasquez to make his way from first base all the way to untie this game and that's where that could be scored a base hit and an error not sure if Charlie Montoyo the third base coach is going to send the runner if Siciliani fields it cleanly and gets the ball back to the infield now pinch runner will come out to run for Gillespie so Gillespie comes all the way up from Port Falls comes all the way up from Port Charlotte watches the game goes in as a pinch hitter has one hit to drive into and now he's out of the game. Now that's a pretty quick day. Get back on the bus <laughs> and back down south. Pretty good at bat. Pitches outside, ball one. <laughs> Jake Bauer is up. Jake Hager, I beg your pardon, is up here. And the fastball is outside from Bo Schultz. So a tough inning here for. Bo. Three runs chased across. Rays have the four to three lead. Runner at second base, the pinch run. There's a strike on the inside corner, so it's two balls and one strike. This inning started with two base hits to right field by Bowers and Verona. Then Conrad struck out, but Velazquez lined a base hit to right, and now the double here by the pinch hitter Gillespie. Pitch hit on the ground, foul, third base side. We see a second error up on the scoreboard, so I'm going to assume Siciliani yeah. was charged with an error. Yeah. If he comes up cleanly with that ball, Velazquez goes first to third. But with the air where he bobbled it momentarily, that allowed him to come all the way around. But heads up play by Charlie Montoya, the third base coach, keeping his eye on that outfielder, keeping his eye on his runner, playing it aggressive. Schultz is ready. Check of the runner. 2 2 pitch. Popped up. First base side may be playable. The wind's blowing the ball to the dugout in the crowd, and it's going to go back into the crowd. No chance there for Jones. And the count remains two balls and two strikes. Brian Barucki warming up in the Blue Jays bullpen out in right center field. <laughs> and this is where John Gibbons could very well go to the bullpen if Schultz continues to have trouble getting that elusive second and third out here. Got a lefty on deck. Could be his last batter. Two two pitches. Popped up foul third base side may be playable. Birdie comes over with the catcher. It's Reese McGuire the catcher to make the play. Nicely done. And here comes Pete Walker and Pat that's going to be it for Bo Schultz. 
Well, this is where you want to see a lefty, a young player like Borecki. Rucky versus a lefty. Oh, Schultz's afternoon is done, and Pete Walker takes the ball from him. And in spring training, it's a good idea to have Pete go out there, maybe have a word or two with the pitcher. John Gibbons does that during the regular season, but here Pete can pass on some positive words. Rays have the lead, 4 3. We'll be right back. Twenty three delightful Celsius degrees here in Dunedin Florida at Florida Auto Exchange Stadium brilliant sunshine and the Rays now have put a cloud over a little bit of that with a three run top of the eighth inning and they're still batting. How about some of those numbers in Canada today's highs yellow knife minus twenty one <laughs> a little bit of a difference. Well Matt Dermody comes on left hander for the Blue Jays and put it himself pretty well last year coming up. Yeah I think he shows that he's got a pretty good fastball and the Blue Jays if, if camp ended today you got to think that J.P. Howe's one of the lefties and the Blue Jays are looking for one more Aaron Loop is in the mix Matt Dermody is in, in the mix Dermody's got a big fastball and a big slider a couple of games this year already in spring training this is his third appearance he is not allowed to run. Jonah Heim first pitch swinging lines one to short short hop beautifully by Godino. He throws on the first in time nicely done. So Yeltsin gets an opportunity to play and he shows his slickness right there. But the Rays have just scored three here in the eighth inning. So Blue Jays have to play catch up down four to three. This program brought to you by New Scott's Lawn Response 911, a three in one solution that rescues your lawn. Jamie Schultz comes on for Tampa Bay to now protect a four to three lead. 14th round draft pick in 2013 by the Rays. 
He spent the entire 2016 season in Triple A Durham. He made 27 starts then there. 163 strikeouts. That led the International League. He also led the Rays minor leaguers for the second straight season. He's the first Ray minor leaguer to do that since Matt Moore did it three consecutive seasons, leading their minor league system in strikeouts. Well, here he comes facing John Birdie. J.B. Woodman is on deck. Birdie hits one hard and foul. Look out, it goes into the stands. Duck and cover, fans. One of the real nice things about spring training is the intimacy of the fans to the players, with one exception foul balls just like that. Got to be heads up. Birdie takes a strike on the outside corner. No balls and two strikes. Troy Tulowitzki started in this spot, made his spring debut, grounded out and struck out. Birdie then drove, drove in a run to break a 1 1 tie with a fielder's choice ground ball back in the sixth inning. He takes strike three called. Birdie looked that ball right into the glove of the catcher, Jonah Heim. I think he thought it was high and wide. But that's not the way Nick Lentz saw it. Well, you can see why Amy Schultz led their minor leaguers and the International League in strikeouts. Good fastball, hammer, curveball, and then paint one on the outside part of the plate. Three pitches for John Birdie, and Amy Schultz finishes him off. Well, here is Woodman, J.B. Woodman. He takes strike one call. When the Blue Jays went to Bradenton the other day, had a chance to visit with JB at the batting cage and in the dugout as well. He's a Floridian born in Orlando. He was a Blue Jays second round pick last year out of the University of Mississippi. He swings and he misses. Said to him, JB, what do those initials stand for? And he said, Jerry, John Bryant. My dad named me Bryant as a middle name for the great Paul Bryant. Bear great Bryant? Bear Bryant, the coach nice. at Alabama. So John Bryant, JB Woodman at the plate. He fouls one off last year. Broke in with Vancouver, 54 games out there in the rookie league. Hit 272, stole 10 bases, then was promoted to Lansing, where at the end in nine games at 441. Good instincts and some pretty good game awareness. He's got a nice looking swing, too. Not a lot of movement, very quiet at the plate. He takes strike three called, and Schultz now has rung up a couple, is coming on to pinch hit is Mike Ullman. And he will bat for the D.H. Steve Pierce. And Jamie Schultz took a perfect game into the seventh inning when he was in the minor leagues last year. It was broken up by none other than Michael Yastrzemski. Oh, really? The grandson of Carl Yastrzemski. You can see why they're high on him. He's got some pretty good stuff. That was excellent right there. Those two hitters, Birdie and, and now the, the left-hand hitter, Woodman. Here's Ullman. Mike takes strike one called. The other day had a two for two game, including a home run. The Rays with a 4 3 lead here in the eighth inning. Number 43 takes it high. Now, that's a famous number in Blue Jays history. We never saw it because he wore a blue windbreaker over it, but that was manager Cito Gaston's number. But that number was retired. No? Should be. There's a foul off to the right hand side. The Blue Jays are just not an organization to retire numbers. Just one, Roberto Alomar, the Hall of Famer. And that's why you see Dave Steves, 37, worn by a left hander, Scott Downs, and Tony Fernandez, number one, worn by Rowdy Telez now. It's just a philosophy where you make it to the Hall of Fame, there's one number retired, in addition to Jackie Robinson's, 42. Strike three called. Well, Jamie Schultz comes on and gets three straight strikeouts, all looking. Pretty good job. Well, it's 4-3 Tampa Bay as they're dominating here at the end of this one. We go to the ninth inning. We'll be right back.
up at the top of the hour here on Sportsnet. The Calgary Inferno and Montreal Canadiens meet in the Clarkson Cup final for a second straight season. Catch the action from the Canadian Tire Centre in Ottawa immediately following the ball game. Jerry. Thank you, Hazel. Great job today. As per usual, we go to the ninth inning. The Rays with three in the eighth inning. Lead it four to three and a new pitcher coming on. He's a pretty good one, Ryan Tapera. Third time this spring that Ryan has taken the mound for the Blue Jays. A couple of innings, three hits, no walks, and two strikeouts. 6'1, 190 pounds, but he throws hard. He's out of Sam Houston State. Blue Jays got him in 2009. Last year, back and forth between Buffalo and the Blue Jays. He got into 57 games. There is also a new catcher, Alex Monsalve. Will take over and catch Ryan Tapera here in the ninth inning. Whoops. Nick Chufo throws the bat down the right field line. So that is definitely strike one. Pat, I was thinking about this the other day in a spring training game. A bat went into the crowd, and always what happens is that that's a, a bat that the player uses. Now they have a lot of bats, and the security people will get the bat. The crowd inevitably boos. And then oftentimes you don't see the and the organization give another bat to that fan. So I'm going to pose a question here for you because you played for 12 years and at that point there probably weren't as many bats as there are now in the game. The pitch is inside. My first thought was why not just change the rule. Look if you throw the bat into the crowd it's fair game. That bat belongs to the fan and now yet you, you don't end up every thrown bat in the crowd booing and what do you think about that. That a foul bat yeah. and it goes to the crowd that fan gets to keep it. You don't get it back. One one pitch ground ball up the middle of the diamond backhand and nicely at second by Shane open still the first in time one down. Can I answer that question with another question. Sure. A ball that goes into the stands do they give it back. Well that's no. that's that's no. a, that's a whole different situation. It's a foul ball that goes into the stands. They get to keep it. So if your back gets helicoptered into the stands, you keep it. Yes. And so now let's refine it too. You're a player, but in today's day and age with bats so, so prolific as they are, you can hit a home run then break one the next one so you, you go to another bat. As here is Johnny Field a swing and a miss strike one. Are bats that precious work that hitter who throws that bat into the crowd has to have that bat back or can't we just say you keep it fam. Uh, you know what there are certain bats that just feel so good for you and I think that some of it might be psychosomatic it might be in your head but it just feels good and you get three hits you want that bat back I, I get that. Uh, that's part of it part part of it's in your in your head so why not just make a trade then. If you want that bat back so bad, go give them two of your your other ones. So you see it staying the way it is then, because of yeah, that. yeah. Strike two pitch, punch to right field, dropping quickly, and that's a base hit. Woodman over to pick it up on a hop. Well, that answers it right there. I, I I just assume with bats the way they are, you can order so many bats and players have them that go through them throughout the year that a bat couldn't be that precious to a hitter where just keep it fan I'll take another one but now you counter that with perhaps something that maybe says that's why they did. Well if if a bat feels like there are guys who go up there and they're 0 for 15 and they have a bat and they helicopter it into the stands and they don't want it back go ahead and keep it. But there are times uh, when you're feeling pretty good and you you honed it down or you got just enough pine tar on it or you shaved the, the handle down and it just feels so good that you don't want to get rid of it. All right there we go that answers that Bowers up here and he fouls one off Rays lead it four to three with one on and one out in the ninth inning. They about hit the Blue Jays 10 8. Tampa Bay has had an interesting week and here they're trying to end the week with three runs in the eighth inning as they just scored to take the lead twice this week. They have seen 19 runs go up on the board. They won 19 to nothing. They lost 19 to two. They lost yesterday one to nothing. The pitch is inside. We saw Kevin Cash about that and he said well at least we got our pitches in. <laughs> Have you ever heard of two games. Doesn't matter when spring training or regular season. I can understand one game. The Blue Jays have had a 19 inning game in their mm -hmm. history. But two 19 run run games, games where you score 19 and you win and you score 19 and you lose all in one week. You give up 19 runs. 
and then you score 19. The pitch is in there for strike one and two. In their game yesterday against the Baltimore Orioles, their pitchers had it working. One to nothing. One nothing, that's right. They had 16 strikeouts, but they lost one to nothing to the Baltimore Orioles. So I guess they've had different degrees and different sides of it. One to nothing, and then you you lose 19 to to two or something like that, wasn't it? You lose 19 to two, and a few days before that, you went 19 to nothing. <laughs> but it's just, I think for Tampa Bay, it's going to be that kind of a season where it's so unpredictable. Kevin has to manage a lot of kids now. No Logan, Logan Forsythe at second base. It's not going to be easy. Well, that's what makes spring training so tough. Ground ball hit out to second base. Nicely taken by Opitz, throw it on to first. You're going to get those type of games where you've got minor league players coming in and they're not used to, you know, these situations. And next thing you know, five, six, seven runs are put up on the board. That's spring training. It's worse at Arizona. You ever see some of the scores coming out of Arizona with that thin air and the ball flying out of there? There's a lot of 19 run games. <laughs> Just start checking them. I will. Verona comes up here. They're on. Last inning, single on the ground to right was part of a three run eighth inning for the lead. Pitches outside, Alex Monsalve behind the plate. Ryan Tapera, we talked to a week ago. We said, Ryan, what was it like to be optioned and recalled seven times last year? Seven. He said, Jerry was difficult. And especially when the team went to San Francisco, where he had been called up. In the middle of all that, there's a strike called. He came on to face one hitter in extra innings. In San Francisco and threw four pitches out of the zone. San Francisco won it on a walk off walk. Ryan said I was told after the game I was going back to AAA. He said I spent the first day at home. I had to rethink where I was and gather myself. And I spent the first day doing that at home. There's a ground ball hit to the left hand side, scooped up nicely by the shortstop. Godino's throw goes by the first baseman. A run comes in to score. Heading for second is Verona. The slide, the tag, and out at second base to close the inning is a hitter, Verona. But in hindsight, Ryan said, I needed that 24 hour period to gather myself, and I was so much better after that. I got those recalls out of my system, it made me better. 5 3, Tampa Bay. We go to the bottom of the ninth inning here in Florida Auto Exchange Stadium in Dunedin, Florida. The Rays have a five to three lead bottom of the ninth inning tall slender right hander Kevin Gadea comes on. Gadea is listed at six foot five 240 pounds he played last year with the Arizona Mariners in rookie ball. He also pitched for Clinton and he throws hard he's gotten into a couple of games this spring last year he got into 68 and a third innings and had 95 strikeouts another one of those tall rangy right handers who can bring it last inning Jamie Schultz came in struck out the side for the Blue Jays well here's another strikeout artist 
And Bradley Jones, a right-handed hitter up from the Bobby Maddox Center, the, the complex for minor leaguers, comes up here to take him on. White Smith Jr. is on deck. Then Shane Opitz. Pitch hit on the ground sharply, but right to second base. A flip on to first, one pitch, one out to start the bottom of the ninth inning. And that's become part of baseball parlance, really. One pitch, one out. Isn't that a pitcher's dream? Well, in a two run lead. You've got a two run lead in the ninth inning. Back in the day, it was like, hey, make him throw a strike. We need some base runners. Let's let him get on. He's just into the ball game. He's been sitting down there for three hours, and now he comes into the ball game, <laughs> swinging at the first pitch. Dwight Smith comes up here, batting left handed. He takes it high, ball one. Jose Bautista doubled back in the second inning, a shot down the left field line, stole third off starter Alex Cobb, and Steve Pierce who was at the plate. A sacrifice fly to right field. It was 1 nothing end of two. Smith takes inside. Rays quickly tied it in the third inning off Marcus Stroman. Evan Longoria, two out, first pitch, RBI single to right, cashing in Corey Dickerson. Blue Jays, two in the sixth inning, RBIs by John Birdie and Pierce again. But then the Rays, three in the eighth inning and one in the ninth for the lead. Smith fouls one off to the left hand side. We mentioned that Dwight's dad, Dwight Sr., played eight years in the major leagues, four with Atlanta, four with the Cubs. And when we talked to Dwight here in spring training just a little while ago, we asked him about the influence that his dad has had on him. The pitch is in there, strike two called. He said, the one thing my dad always told me, both as a player in high school in Peachtree City, Georgia, and a Blue Jays first round pick, he said, no matter what happens, think of this. Eye on the prize. And that is playing Major League Baseball like his dad did. 2 2 pitch hit on the air into right center field pretty deep. Winds are blowing in, so it's going to help the right fielder to make the catch on the track. Eye on the prize for Dwight Smith. It hasn't been easy. You're a first round pick back now six years ago. And last year, finally started to see a little success in double A New Hampshire with a career high 15 home runs. Well once you get to double A then you're really considered a prospect. You're just a couple of jumps away from the big league. You can get the double A. That's where you can really start to hone your game. Pitchers are able to start executing game plans and you can think along those lines as a hitter that the game plans that they're in. And I think Jerry the higher up you go. I don't want to say it's easier to hit, but they're around the plate. You don't have balls thrown all over the place. They're around the plate, and you can get up there and just think about hitting. Foul off to the left-hand side. Shane Opitz up here. Left-handed hitter. Well, it's one of those games where everyone has talent, and then you have to mentally be able to compete Talked about Marco Estrada doing that here today. There's a ground ball out to second base. Flip it on to first. And with that, Tampa Bay hangs on to win it five to three. So, Pat, today we saw Marcus Stroman. We saw Aaron Luke do a good job to pick him up in that third inning to get the last out. Marco Estrada and Roberto Osuna and Joe Smith. Those were highlights on the mound today. Perfect example of what spring training is all about. You got to get your pitchers into shape. Marcus Stroman threw the ball extremely well. You mentioned Luke. Marco Estrada was sharp in his two innings. Roberto Osuna with a couple of strikeouts in his innings. And then we got a chance to see Joe Smith. You get those guys in shape. Marcus Stroman's going to take off for the WBC. Blue Jays lose by a couple of runs, but the pitchers did a good job this afternoon. And so did you, Pat Tabler. So the Rays come up from Port Charlotte, went at 5 to 3. That's it for us here. Next up, the Clarkson Cup. So be sure and follow that. It's the Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays today. No baseball tomorrow. And then join us right here Tuesday when the Blue Jays host Team Canada in the World Baseball Classic preview to Thursday's game against the Dominican.